Hello, everybody, and welcome to Save or Die Outcast. All right, party. You're going to go to Martha's Menagerie, and you're going to steal a sexy ass, right? I, uh, yes. Oh, holy ass. Right. anything about stealing. Liberate. Ooh, yeah. You're going to liberate the booty. We're going to acquire. Yep. Acquire. We're going yeah. to mule. dominate that mule. No, we're going to get the mule. We're going to steal Listen, it. We're going to take it back. We were, we're all having a nice it. time in the, in the pre-game chat. But this is serious business, man. Let's. This isn't Cosmo's kitchen. Just fucking. It, okay. it is serious. We're trying business. to save That's... a donkey, blessed by Martha, no less, that can talk. So let's just have a bit of fucking perspective. And some have respect. some goddamn respect. I you, Neil. Someone have respect and click the record button. I, I like oh, the stream. Yeah. I'm recording, recording now, thank you. Well. I'm in industrial yeah, action. I refuse recording. to record or upload. Anyway, my point is. <laughs> My point is, or to get a this haircut, donkey can't. Yeah, no, 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 I can't. But the donkey it's cannot good. talk. That was a speak with animals. I think it looks good on me. You know, I got, I got the hair. Yeah, flick it's like the off, beaver you know? cut. You know. No, yeah, I'm sorry, that sure. was uncalled for. It actually looks pretty good. I'm the sorry. donkey yeah. did talk. You know what? I feel like I could get a haircut, but that would require me to leave my house. Okay, and I've been playing yeah. the stupid fucking train game. I've put eighty hours in over the last like oh, six days. Oh my days. fucking god! Let me. Anyway, me... guys, Neil, set the scene. Where do we leave off? <laughs> Wait, I want I to talk no about idea. the rail game. Oh. Okay, well, listen, I'm going to do a recap. Vaguely. <laughs> cool. So we I thought we don't do recaps anymore. I thought we were too good for recaps. No, I'm not. We are too full, good for recaps. It's, it's not Go straight recap. into the first scene. We've already Go. fucked up the instant going no, into the sure. show. Yeah. So everybody who's uninterested has already clicked off anyway, so only the true fans are here. No, this so. is... Yeah. And nice. director... Nice. Scene one. Go. Okay, so we've been traveling to the capital looking for work, <laughs> came across a job. Wait, we went to Autumn. <laughs> we, went, we went to Autumn to why? investigate Grau's origins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but why? Nick, there was, was a thing Grau. that happened. There's a thing that happened. <laughs> Grau, what happened omen. to you? Yeah. There was an omen. It's That's an right. omen. What was yep. it? Grau asked Nadinus about his origin and where to go to find out. Nadinus gave him in July three tricolored leaves, golden, red, and brown. And everyone interpreted that as meaning autumn. So we went to Autumn's place to ask her. Okay. Okay. Great. And Autumn, while we were there, we were there, we are looking for a way to make some gold because we're kind of short on cash. Um, and she requested that we look into a mule that has been that is given birth, and mules should be, uh, not celibate, what's the word? Sterile. <laughs> Sterile. Sterile. Sterile, yeah. Not celibate. Mules should be celibate, too. They <laughs> True. Be. You couldn't blame them, but <laughs> they are meant to be sterile. <laughs> so it's given birth to a fawn, and therefore must be blessed by Martha. And Autumn, because she's a bit fucking weird like this, is, is obsessed with strange animals, a la the dog that she's torturing, a la Grau, and now a la this mule. She wants us to bring the mule to her. That could mean stealing the mule. It could mean convincing it to come with us. So we went to the town where this thing is. It's all over the place. There's posters. There's people celebrating this thing. There's like a week-long party going on. People are drinking. They're celebrating this holy mule. Um, so we go and see it. You know, it's in a it's in a room. There's people all around. Uh, they're watching it. And Grau goes up to it in human form, I think. He can't speak with animals secretly. Right. Has a conversation with this mule. And right. contrary to it being a criminal offense, the clerics seem enthralled. The mule has chosen him. They are. They want to know what it said. And I think pretty much that's where we ended. I'm, I'm not sure if we went back to yeah. the tavern or whatever. No, that's that, perfect. That's where we are. Yes. Um, just two corrections. It gave birth to a foal, not a fawn. And Autumn doesn't torture dogs. Whatever. I said, only that corrections. That we know of. That I we know, know, of. know of. Totally yeah. think it's way funnier if you just never correct them. <laughs> and just yeah. let him live with the misconception. <laughs> but but I've done that in the past, and the plot. It, sometimes the party gets distracted, and then they think it's truth. And then if you know that they're just completely misconstruing something, and then it actually turns into something seven sessions later, it becomes like a a problem. Fair. It's a problem. I, do, I know what you're talking about. Thank okay. You. Yeah. Fair. But anyway, step one. I want to give you my goat theory. I think this fucking mule is bullshit. I think. They just pretended it gave birth, and I think we're going to find the true criminal, which is somebody who tried to pass off this 
you know, savior, chosen one, born under the third star, mule son. Are you saying Let's this in or out of character? Both. We're in the okay. tavern at the end of We're the day. We're in the tavern. Yes, and you've just said that. Um, and Grau is sitting there. I'm in human form. Um, no, I spoke to the mule, okay? It did give birth. It does have a baby. And it's upset about losing it. And we must get back the mule and the baby. Is it, yeah, the mule, is it the definitely mule is a mule, though? Would but it not did just it be say, a donkey? Did it say it has a, has a baby in the same way that, like, I pick up my beer. And I'm like, I have a beer. You know what I mean? <laughs> that doesn't mean I gave birth to it, you know? I, and then I give, I, I think... give my beer to, to Sakara, and I'm like, I had a beer. Did it have a baby, or did it, like, give birth? That's the real thing that we need to get down to. I don't, Did you ask I it don't that? think that, that mules have a concept of possession like you humans do. It's I'm still getting used to it myself, really. Uh, so I'm pretty sure it was their baby. Um, you know, refer is it, this was a female, right? Mule. Yeah. 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 She. Yeah, she, men, she men gave don't give birth. birth. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was her baby. Yet. Yeah. I mean, let's I'm sure. let's think about it. Uh, Ren, it's this. Ren. Sorry. Autumn believes it. If it was some simple trick, Autumn wouldn't have fallen for it. It's got to be true. Also, really quick, um, Neil, I would, I know about animals. I'm a bear. I would be able to tell a mule from a donkey, right? Yes. I've just posted yes. in our personal chat two pictures that show you the difference between horses, mules, and donkeys. If you're at all, uh, you know, involved in animals and animal handling and farms and shit, you can tell the difference between them very easily. Yep. Um, okay. This is the wrong was, chat, though. I just I'm, sent this to I, a completely so. different group of people. <laughs> I mean, why is Neil Mule posting? What's happening? Yes. Wait, just follow it up in the chat with <laughs> Hot, isn't she? <laughs> Thanks, man. That'd be funny. The donkey and the mule look pretty similar to me now. You I'm, yeah, I'm going to be honest horse, with you. But I wouldn't no. know the difference. So, so, Ren, I'm sure that she gave birth. I'm sure that she's a mule. <laughs> it's not a scam. We need to find the baby and then free them both. You want totally. to free the baby as well? But well, we, yeah, she's she. We can't leave her without the baby. She's really upset. They took it from her. Well, like, what if the baby might also be important? Autumn would probably give us extra money if we brought the baby. Okay. My point is, just to be clear, we don't know what happened here. We're going off on a lot of work. People are making money outside. Things are being sold. I take out the golden amulets that I stole. I'm like, look, people are making serious cash here. Fake mule, miracle birth, plenty of money to be made, lots of motivation. All I'm saying is, I didn't see no mule give no birth. All right, but at the end of the day, do we care whether it's true or not? We just need to deliver the fucking horse to Autumn and collect the cash. It's true. Why it's important we, uh... to me that it's true because it is... Well, yeah, I mean, but I, but I, I think you're right. Why don't we start with the baby? We'll get the baby and then the mule will want to come with us. And if we can demonstrate that to the clerics, they seem to respect its opinion. It'll want to come with us because we'll have the baby. You'll be able to somehow maybe demonstrate that that's what it wants and we can just walk off with it. How are we going to know which one is the mule's baby? And even Rao. where to find this? Can talk Mama, to Mama will know by the smell, right? Well, my, uh, won't be my there, dog right? could always find it. My dog could always find her puppies by Rao smell. Is saying that we won't even bring the mule until we have the baby. No, we gotta get the baby well, first, yeah. I'm assuming the baby is stored somewhere in a special place. They took it away, right? Somebody's probably looking at it, and they I, probably don't have a bunch of other baby mules there. They're I don't know. I asked one. about it. It sounded like they left it on the farm it was born. Maybe, maybe. I'm wrong. We should, uh... Maybe that's where we should start. I think so, too. Well, the town trusts you, right? With To do with the mule, right, Grau? So... It seems like it. Would you say that the mule wishes to be reunited with her child? And I just could try that before lying and stealing again. We could maybe talk to the clerics. See that I say that I have had a connection, a divine talk with her. We don't have to reveal that I can actually speak to her, right? But we could convince them. Um, and maybe. They will let us find the baby, but yeah, I think in instead of telling people that you're a, <clears throat> I, a, a druid, maybe we could just tell them that you're a cleric of Nadinus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So then you can talk sense. to them and be like, hey, I'm a cleric of Nadinus. I can speak with this creature. It wants its baby back. Um, we would. Uh, I was we, sent by we Nadinus. Need to buy you know? an amulet. Isn't like, Neil? Isn't a cleric of Nadinus literally just a druid? No, not quite. Okay. Not quite. You might also have a hard time passing yourself off as a cleric yeah. if they asked you, you know, nice anything person. clerical related. Yep. Um, you you'd fumble on that pretty hard. So was a druid like a sorcerer for like wizards? You know what I mean with that comparison? I know what you mean. Um, it's not quite the same, but it's sort of similar. Okay. It, one day I want to transition. I would like to come up with a set of rules where druids are clerics of Nadinus and paladins are clerics of Zistidi and like all of the different divine mm. classes are just clerics of sub-gods, but mm. I haven't actually gone through to make all those rules for 2nd edition and 5th edition yet. Yeah, that sounds good. Does that mean we finally get warlocks? Fuck warlocks. <laughs> no, warlocks <laughs> exist. That's what uh, RX and Pokemon, or sorry, uh, Potato McWhiskey's last character was. Uh, uh, Sale, yeah, Sale was a uh, Sale. warlock. That's the current yeah. prevailing theory, right? <clears throat> That's the I prevailing think so, theory. Yeah. Get a patron? Um, okay, so just to go back to the plan, I'm thinking if we ask the clerics and say that the donkey just wants, the mule just wants to be reunited with its child, that will probably work for them to give us the information on where the child is. Okay, that's step one, done. Then it's harder to sell them on the idea that the donkey wants to come with us because we've got the child. So I think if we can find the child on our, on our own and then it's now with us, we can say, well, the donkey wants, the mule wants to come with us because mm -hmm. we've got its child. If mm. I think if we found the child and we took on its scent and we just walked in, the donkey would realize that we have the child and would want to come with us, right? And then we can convince the cleric. It's very smart, Grau. That's yeah. incredibly smart. I know a lot yeah. about animal sense. Okay. So we don't even need to get the child. We can just get the scent. Yeah. Okay, I think not talking to the clerics and first just trying to find the child on our own yeah. might be the way to go. I'm sure. Uh, I, I I'm sure people idea. know where this was born, and yeah. I'll actually get up and I'll just like start talking to people because I'm sure it's like it's the talk of the town, right? Everyone's going to be talking. Oh, about totally. Yeah, it was like uh, I'll Billy stroll up Bob's to people. Farm. And I'll be like, oh, like tell me, like what's going on with this mule thing? Mm-hmm. Um, we don't have to walk through all of the RP if you don't want. If you will just want the information, you can get it pretty easily. Or if you want the RP, we can do it. Uh, how do you want to go about this? Uh, let's just let's just get the information. Uh, yeah, save time for so, more interesting RP. <clears throat> Mule came from a a local, not in the city itself, not in, not in this town, but like one of the nearby farms. Um, they had the mule that gave birth, and so they brought it here as an offering to the the clerics and to the temple of Martha. All right. Um, does you can get know... the individual person's name. Uh, their actual farm has become a bit of a, a holy site. Um, yes. And there are people who are going to go visit. So if you want to go by and visit the, the birthplace of the Miracle Mule, you can do that. That is exactly what I would like to do, and I require that information, good sir. And whoever tells me that, I will buy him a drink. Done. It is wow. given to you. One drink. You have the address. It is uh, <clears throat> Henry's Farm out past the old stagecoach road. You're, you're third left on your right. Third left on your right. Got Beyond it. yonder hill, yeah. Um, Henry's farm. Sorry, I take out like a piece of paper. I'm like, right. Henry's farm. What was that again? Sorry, run right. oh, my brain is slow. I can old read. Old stagecoach road. Third left on your right. Beyond yonder hill. Third left on your right. Well, yeah. <laughs> Jeez, these are simple directions. Can you not follow these? I'm sorry, yeah. third left on your right. What are you yes. About? It's the third left on your right. I'm in. Got it. <clears throat> Henry's old state coach road, third right on your left. Totally wrote that down. Yeah. <laughs> it's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> You'll get there. There'll be a whole line of pilgrims or some bullshit. Yeah, probably. All right. I, I tell the party what I found and I make the suggestion. We should head there tomorrow. Well, I, yeah, that was easy. Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a little think, bit drunk right now, so why don't we do it tomorrow instead? I think I would like to go tomorrow <laughs> so I can prepare my speak to animal spells again. Good move. Good idea. Good move. Yeah. You guys are a lot smarter than I remember you last week. <laughs> <laughs> that was very true. Maybe we're blessed by Nadinus. 
Perhaps we are. Wait, it's a holy quest. He spoke to the donkey. Maybe we are blessed. Maybe that's how it works. Mm. I mean, the donkey itself is holy. Maybe this isn't bullshit. I want to touch that ass now. Yeah, I think I came I came across a weird magical dust earlier called Rit Allen, and I think it's. <laughs> 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 <clears throat> All right. Well, you know, we I drink the night away. Eventually, go to sleep. Excellent. <clears throat> okay. Well, party. The next day, you all wake up. You're rested. We don't have to worry about costs because we're doing monthly finances. Um, <clears throat> take it away. All right. I, I guess we, we head out to the yeah. farm. Everyone, Let's... redo your spells. Doing it. Yeah, okay. I think I want to prepare the same spells I had last time, which was... Give me a second. Um, I think I'm not doing any combat stuff. I'm doing animal friendship, calm animals, and I, I will keep cure moderate wounds, just in case. Always comes in useful. Um, unless anything, anyone has anything to say, on the way, as we, as we make our way out of the tavern in the morning, or the inn, um, I will make small talk with the party. Like, so, what's the game plan? What are we? What are we going to be doing? Are we just going gonna... to the farm to find it? What are we, we doing? Just offer if the we farmer find money it? for the fowl. No, we take the third left on our right. Yeah, I think old, we just old, observe. Old stage coach, old stage yeah. coach farm, Henry's Road. Right. Let's see what the situation is. I mean, <laughs> this farmer might know that he's uh <laughs> he's got a golden goose here. He might be loath to part with the baby donkey mule. Um, or maybe he doesn't realize. Maybe we can just, you know, give him a gold piece and take it. Uh, look, <laughs> we got we to observe the situation. Is what I'm saying. I'll crack my knuckles as I say this. I'm like, and look, it's way easier to stay to steal a baby than a mama. <clears throat> yeah, easier to carry. Grab it. That's a disturbing thought. Brand well, they're just they're smaller. Wait. I mean, I don't. Know. I just I don't. Personally, I've not stolen any babies, is all I'm saying. If we... You never stole a puppy as a kid life. to raise as your own? <laughs> Peasants live weird lives. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, this is... Dude, our ping, our ping low end is a problem with me, because I think... I, so I, I have plans, but I don't Never know. RP low end. It's, it's okay. just... <laughs> so, okay, wait. We, we can make this work. Um, so, back when I... Back when I was still roaming the country, sometimes if I wanted a yummy calf or something like that, mm. the way to go get it would be to wait until other humans would arrive at the door of the farm and distract the people, and then I could go in and steal it. I think this would be maybe good because then mm. we wouldn't raise suspicion if we got caught, if they just saw a bear go into the farm and take the baby. They wouldn't think more of it, right? That's a good point. It is also quite dangerous. Maybe you could talk I like to the, the idea. Maybe you could talk to the fowl in the morning. Good idea. My only worry is every time we've had you use your power in something like this, it hasn't gone well for us. That's my worry. Yeah. What if we, we should what if we speak to the what if you speak to the mule baby today? Tell it what you're going to do. So that it's not so scared when it actually happens. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a good idea. That seems like okay. that's a perfect We're working plan. As a I team. can't, I can't yeah. believe it. That's a great plan. Yep. Let's do it. I have this sudden feeling of dread creeping through my spine that things are going too well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So I think do we do we want to roll up as four on the farm? Introduce ourselves, talk to them, see if we can talk to the baby, or what do you guys want to do? Yeah, I think, let's see what this um, is. If it's like, if it's like a, a pay for access kind of situation, then yeah. When, when I was a young lad, I read a, a great book, and uh, when you're a large party, it's often better to show up one by one rather than all at once. So I think if we mm. timed our arrivals together, we could be more confusing and potentially uh, spin a web of confusion and cause some commotion and maybe get out with the mule straight away. What book did you read? Uh, I don't remember. It was uh, it was one of the musings from uh, J.R. Okay. At the very I... least, we'll need to make a distraction again for when Grau casts his spell to speak with the mule. Yes. We'll have to observe who's there watching. Maybe one of us or two of us go and distract that person when Grau gets close or something like that. 
uh, immediately upon him saying this, I'll like lean over and be like, oh, 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 oh God. <laughs> and I'm like pretending to collapse to the ground. <clears throat> I'll give you a charisma check. Ren. Ren, Ren, are you Ren, okay? Are you okay? Oh, we knew this Ren, thing. I, Ren, I fall onto the ground. <laughs> oh my God. And then I say, ha, gotcha. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> uh, it's not funny, Ren. Deception. <laughs> <laughs> he said you needed a distraction. <laughs> Right, well, if you can do that in there, then all the better. All right, all right. Okay, I like Rao take the lead. He knows what he's doing. I'm on hand to distract any guards when he needs to cast his spell. Okay. Excellent. Well, you get to the farm, and on your way there, you see a lot of people on the road, like normal. But the closer you get to the farm, the more people are heading in your same direction. And by the time you get to the farm, you've been walking sort of among other folks it's not a crowd but you know there's plenty of people and you've been following the same people are being followed by the same people as you do in a long travel situation and everyone seems to be headed to the same farm and there's a little flag that's been hastily erected outside on the gate uh, on the fence near the farm to keep all the cows in that has the flag of martha or the symbol of martha the golden rings connected over a white sheet that someone has hastily painted or, or sewn together and uh, sure enough, there's a whole bunch of folks wanting access to the farm. And there's the farmer's children it's hang hanging out near the gate with a little collection dish, asking for donations, since this is a blessed farm of Martha. If anyone wants to show their piety and, and show their blessings and their the desire to commune with the deities, uh, you can leave a couple of copper here or a couple of silver here, depending on your income. Um, for the farm, um, I the check farm my coin. Blessed. I open my coin pouch and look inside and see what I'm see what I'm looking because I can't really remember. Then I look inside the the collection box. What are we talking here? Is there a lot of coins in here? Is it mostly copper? Um, the coins are predominantly copper. We're talking like a sea of copper with a couple of silver scattered throughout. I will poignantly reach into my coin purse right and pull out three silver coins mm. i look at the child in the eye and i say mm -hmm. raise me to martha as i drop the coins in i'll pull the, out the kids nod thank you thank you for offering right on through this way this way to the magical progeny this way yeah i'll pull out two gold coins <laughs> drop them in there the kids' gold, eyes sir. go wide. My God. Their mouths begin to drop. <clears throat> they stare at you. Ma Ra Martha, Ruckus bless you. coughs a little bit as he notices the two gold coins. <laughs> and I will slow down to catch up with him. As, as, uh, as I'm donating. Them if you're ahead of him. It's true. Because I hear them reacting and I turn and I catch the mm. glimpse of gold in the in the collection bowl. Nice. Maybe a perception check, Neil. Thank you. <laughs> no, I see that. No, it's, it's shiny. It's yeah, gold. It's fine. You see it. It's fine. Good. That's good. I get to the donation plate and I'm like holding my bag of gold over it and I'm shaking my hand <laughs> slightly. And I oh my I cough like an old man hacking cough <clears throat> and I accidentally drop my coin purse and then I reach in to like grab it and as I do I scoop out those two gold coins and I take them. <laughs> Give me a pickpockets check, no modifiers. <laughs> Justified. Wow. Man, I wonder why you got the creeps because things were going too well. I really... <laughs> Boom. Oh, 68. yeah. Easy right. peasy. You add uh, two going, gold coins to your character I just sheet. stole from Moon. <laughs> I, let, I, let, Indirectly. Uh, I let August catch up with me. I did my good deed. Look at him. Mm -hmm. How much gold do you have? Uh, I'll look into my coin pouch. I don't know, like 10, 13. I should take that off you. I say as I walk up a bit faster you and should, walk away from him. You should pay me, I say, when he walks <laughs> away. <laughs> I don't know what... I'm, I'm, I think to myself, I have no idea what this idiot means. You owe me a thousand gold for what I did for you, <laughs> I yell back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair. Um, all right, we, you know, we go and visit the donkey. Yeah, the party arrives. There's people here. There's a little... Things set up where there's the corral with the baby foal in it. Um, and then, you know, there's the farm with all the other animals and the people are there trying to like sell the cheese off the farm. And here's the fresh milk from the farm. And, and here's the fodder from the farm. And here's, you know, the, the farmer's gloves that he buck. was wearing while he was, uh, you know, giving birth. And they're, they're just 
they're doing their best to take advantage of a rare opportunity that comes their way. Who, who could blame them? Um, he, he's watching it. Yeah. Well, the farmer's there, the farmer's wife there, and the farmer's other kids are there. Yeah, there's a farmer, so there's a bunch of kids here, right? So uh, you can see four youths between the ages of like nine and 16, plus uh, someone who's got to be the farmer and the farmer's wife or the farmer and the farmer's husband, depending on your point of view. And um, <clears throat> maybe some cousins, I suppose, or some other family members, or maybe nearby folks who are unrelated that are here helping tend the situation. But there's also like a flood of 20, 25 onlookers, viewers, um, and some are clearly leaving and others are coming in. So 25 uh, spectators, maybe 10 people that live or work at the farm temporarily. Um, when I, when you let me know when Grog gets close to the donkey, because I'm going to make a scene. So, you know, I, 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 I want to get close to the donkey. moving up. He's moving close to the small donkey baby. Also known as a mule. Yes. <laughs> hey, what did you say? A fawn. Oh. He said a fawn. Fall. Fall. F A O L. Yes. I think. Yeah. Sounds right. A fool. Um, so when he gets That's, close, yeah. I will, I, I, you know, I raise my stuff in the air, my onyx raisin, raven black stuff. I'm clearly a wizard. I'm in red robes. And I mm -hmm. say, save your coins, ladies and gentlemen, for this is no divine blessing. Nay, this is a homunculus created by sorcery, for I have seen its like in the past, in lands to the north and to the south indeed. No, save your coin, this is not the blessing of Martha. This is foul <gasps> sorcery at its worst. Your coins are wasted. These <laughs> oh. are criminals. <laughs> what does I, he mean? I continue this, I continue this rant. As, as this goes on, Grau casts Speak With Animals. Right, so you're starting to cast Speak With Animals while Arrakis is giving this speech about how this is all like lies, yes. which draws the attention of everybody. And the locals get pissed. <laughs> they literally grab their pitchforks out of the hay oh, and start coming on over to you with like f rage in their eyes. How dare you speak ill of this blessing, this divine blessing brought upon us oh, by the gods, sanctified by the priests and uh, the clerics yes. and the Violence. city. The last bastion of the charlatan. No, come with me with your pitchforks. You shall not Heretics. silence me. My Heretics. message is the truth. Take him to the temple. And the crowd begins to gather around Arrakis, angry, bitter. This is a miracle. How dare you rip this from their eyes? Have you ever tried to tell someone that the thing that they believe in is not true? That's how you start religious wars, regardless yeah. of how, how, how much okay. truth might be there. How this close are they getting? Working. Because it's if clearly, they're getting I, like... Yeah, go on, you, you say how close are they getting? Uh, they, you won't know how close they're going to get until they cross the threshold of how comfortable you are, so right? So how comfortable I am is like reach two. When they get to like reach two, if they still got their pitchforks and they're pissed off, I'm gonna level the glaive because- You level I'm, your glaive immediately yeah. then because the crowd is pushing in. Yeah. Then there it is, I level my glaive. Uh, I, calm choose down here. <clears throat> I choose this moment to fall over hacking and coughing and pretending to die. <laughs> How is how is today the only day that Nick had the worst plan out of all of us? He's, <laughs> it's because he's drunk. Yeah. All right. It was funny. Though. Okay. It was funny. Am yeah. I am I able to get close to the mule child as this is going on? Um. Yes, you can. The people, the 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 girl who's like standing in the paddock with the mule is so mouth agape like she stopped stroking the fur and then she like walked over and is like climbing up on the fence to look over the people's heads to watch them beat arrakis to death um and so you can just like slip in between the gates and go on over to the thing because everyone is paying attention and then okay. now there's an old man on the ground and like it's just and martha's blessing she's got us of life and here's a guy dying and oh my god what a, this is not a good day uh, yeah maybe everyone this is our wildly. opportunity actually i am maybe... protecting arrakis yeah, okay. well, they don't want to get close to that glaive. That's scary, yeah. but yeah. they got pitchforks. They got um, cow pies that they're beginning to hurl. Yeah. They're hurling yeah. insults. It's no, a mess. Sorry. So I think, I'm not sure if we're surrounded, but I think the plan is to, like, once I've clearly got their attention and he's covering me and there's a reluctance to just rush me, that we start backing up out of the farm. Yes. Right. 
If you do not Neil. retreat, they will surround you. Yeah, so <laughs> but we, wait, we, what we, about, we back up. We've what about Renata's? <laughs> yeah. He's fine. I'm, he's not. He's not involved. He's all right. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. faking a heart attack, though. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Neil, before yeah. I engage with the baby, one, how many people are still currently? How many people still currently have their eyes on this mule? Zero. And no. what does my escape route look like right now if I wanted to grab this thing and run? Um, well, it's still a f animal, so you'd have yeah. to like lift it up over the fence that goes around it, or you'd have to lead it to the gate and open the gate and walk it out. Let me worry uh, about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's open farmyard with some hedgerows and some fences yeah. and then a, f a road over there. Uh, pretty clear lines of sight until you get on the other side of a hedgerow, which is maybe, you know, 300 feet from you, 400 feet from you, two rounds of movement. Yeah. Okay, Growl is going to get close to the baby. Mm -hmm. The first thing he wants to do is just extend his hand and see how the baby reacts. I'm pretty disinterested. Uh, does Growl apparent. smell like his mom still? Yeah, that's what I. Uh, that was my next question. Do I still smell like the mule's mom? Mm, after a day of doing other stuff and going to a tavern and sleeping and walking across the road, uh, probably not. Not significantly. Yeah, okay. Th that's that's fine. Okay, the first thing that Grau is going to do, second thing, is he's going to remember that, like, chewing thing that the mom used to do. He's going to imitate that. That exact yep. sound of the baby. Yep. Baby's making the same sound, too, as it noms a carrot. Right. Seems pretty happy. And he's, he's going to try to imitate the tone of voice that the mom had. Mm-hmm. Hey. This okay. is your casting speak with animals? Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> Hi. Okay. Hi. Your mom sent me here. Mom? You remember it stops your mom? chewing and looks at you. Mom? You remember your mom? Yes. Where's mom? I can bring you to her. You Let's go. go to your mom? Yeah? Yeah. Where's mom? Right, let, let's get you out of here. Are you my mommy? I'm not, <laughs> but I can bring you to her. Okay. I'm a good friend of your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Are you my daddy? Jeez. No, I've got a lot of candy in there. <laughs> That's great. I'm, I'm, I'm a good friend of your mom. I can bring you there. Okay. Okay, let's go. Do you just do you, you have to just trust me and follow me? Okay, we can get out of here. Okay. 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 Just follow me. I kind of lead it. Yeah, it, it starts walking behind you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. we have to get it over like a fence or something. Yeah, there's a fence. It's uh, about waist height, maybe yeah. maybe a little bit above waist height, and it's a small creature. What's your strength? Uh, fucking seventeen or some shit. It's seventeen. Yeah. Oh, not a problem. Uh, we yeah. hand wave it. You just move it over the fence. Just boost it over. It's probably it wants to go right. I jump yeah. over. Yeah. Um, can I put it under my arm and start running? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's That's a fucking. <laughs> Baby. I fucking <laughs> book it. With 17 strength, you can do this. If anyone else had tried to do this shit, it would have been a huge pain in the ass. But 17 strength and no armor and no gear, you can you can just underarm and... and, and yep. yep. I fucking donkey baby underarm. I fucking book it into the wild. All right. You're going to roll me um, d20s until you roll a 11 or higher and that's how long it takes someone to notice okay yeah. you want low no. well, all right so within one round um someone chances a glance back at the full within one round of you getting <laughs> over the fence and immediately the shout comes up he's stealing the donkey the mule <laughs> And then the crowd, half the crowd is still trying to kill Arrakis, and the other half of the crowd is like trying to help the old man. And now people are torn because there is someone running off with the sacred mule baby, and here's this heretic, and the old man, and he's not quite dead yet, and it's just a chaotic <laughs> scene. So we need we got Amazing. three things <laughs> happening all at the same time. And there's a lot of chaos. It's just it's a big storm. First off, the folks that were helping the old man. Old man, what what's your situation? You you fall into the ground, right? And you're gasping or some bullshit? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm clutching my chest and I'm <gasps> and I'm wheezing and I also mm -hmm. start saying prayers 
uh, like, oh, mother, please take me over. You know, like just kind of incomprehensible. Mm -hmm. People are like mm -hmm. comforting me. Like someone is like kneeling over me and I reach up to him and I'm like, Johnny, Johnny, I thought you were dead. And I'm like stroking his face. <laughs> and then I, 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 right. you know, I, an elderly lady is leaning over me and I, and I'm like, oh, Sylvie, I haven't seen you in years. So oh. it's at this moment while you're talking to Sylvia that the, the shout about the stolen foal comes up and everyone except for Sylvia, who's tending to, who's you know another older lady, um, they all pop their heads up and they're not going to worry about the old man on the ground. What are they going to do, right? They can look in curiosity, but this old woman's got it. And so they start looking at the, the guy running away with the foal and they start looking at the heretic over there um, and they're going to start leaving unless you have an action. Or maybe this is what you want. Maybe you want them to leave so you can make your escape. Uh, yeah, I mean, if they start scuttling away, I will go. I will. Sl I will go quiet over the course of like five seconds, as if I'm falling asleep, um, and then I'm going to do my utmost to rip the fattest fart in human history. <laughs> okay, like I'm talking. Can you fart on command? Is that he a thing? He that has a to skill? roll if he has one stored up. <laughs> what do you want me? To, what do you want me to roll? I'm an old I man. I need you to roll me a twenty on a d20 to fart check. on command. Constitution what? check. Wait, did we have Who has a breakfast? fart ready to go at any given moment? I'm, I'm all, I'm done, all I'm saying I'm is, I'm trying to, f I'm trying to force one out right now, okay? And <laughs> okay, 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 wait. If, it's above if you can a 10... rip one into your microphone right now, he's gonna give it to you. Absolutely. <laughs> well, no, the problem is I haven't been feeling very well, and so I might actually shit myself. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's what happens to your character man. then. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so if I roll a shit board, yourself but... in D D, you shit yourself in real life. <laughs> if I roll above a ten. I just, I rip a fart. If I roll below a 10, I, no, I actually you don't have shit. No, have a 50 <laughs> chance of yeah, farting. But if, I, wait, wait, but if I roll below a 10, I accidentally shit myself. No, 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 <laughs> okay. no. You've got a 1 in 20 chance of farting on command, and that is generous, sir. Give me half All con. Right. Give me half con bonus. No! The farting on command is so. If you wanted to burp on command, I got I would, you. With half con. Not a problem. Fart on command, real tough. Okay, oh. I, I attempt to force out a fart, and when I go quiet, I, I, go. I love how like we're discussing about this, and it's like completely inconsequential whether or not there's a fart coming from him. <laughs> <It> <laughs> this is the stuff campaigns are made of. Okay, the fart doesn't come, but okay. I go quiet, and I do I do my best to rip a fart, and I, I surreptitiously swallow air because it's very easy to do that, <clears throat> and I let out a burp. Mm -hmm. What? There you go. That's doable. Because you were asking me, oh, you want me to fucking inhale air through my asshole and do that instead? Like, this is the best you I can do right now. How are you now. supposed to do it? You can't. That's there's, my a, point. there's a Kenny <laughs> versus the Benny episode on this where they have a contest who can rip the biggest farts. And at the end, Kenny literally starts pumping air into his asshole <laughs> and rips the most insane farts you've ever heard in your life. Apparently, this is very dangerous, by the way. Don't do Don't that do at that. home. Don't yeah. pump air into your asshole. Yeah. But she I can, I can, say it. Kind of I can inhale DHS. air into my stomach and belch on command, okay? So uh, Renatus can do that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, easy peasy. Right. I let a can huge stop burp burping? out. What the no, <laughs> it's, I'm in character right now, okay, motherfucker? <laughs> I, I drop a fat, sick burp mm -hmm. and I just, and then I, I come back and I'm like, Phew. Must have been bad gas, and I leap up <laughs> and take assessment of the situation. <laughs> Excellent. You Amazing. leap up. You look around. There's Growl, full underarm, booking it across the pasture. He's headed for the fence. A couple of people are beginning to chase after him. One of them has a pitchfork. The other is just unarmed and running. Wait, sorry. He's already over the fence, no? Was the fence yeah, one there's, round there's after he got over the fence? Okay. Yeah, there's one round fences. after the fence, but then multiple fences. Blah blah blah. Sorry. You okay. look to the other direction. In a split second, and there's a rackus. I completely ignore a rackus and I chase Grau. <laughs> <laughs> and my goal is to sabotage the people chasing him. Nice. Excellent. All right. Strength check for speed, baby. Give me your best strength check. Can I have Dex? Oh, okay. No strength. Uh, not twenty. Oh. I fucking fart so hard that I go twice the normal speed. Okay. <laughs> you enable your rocket thrusters and you catch up to the pitchfork wielding sucker. <laughs> Don't pretend you're better than us, Mooton. I see you shaking your head. Where you and as I'm silence. running, as I'm running beside this guy, I'm like, I'm trying to come up with a way to like trip him. How many people are chasing, bro? You said like three. Okay, I'm gonna be like running up. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be running beside him, and I'll kind of turn to him, 
and say, what are we running for? And and as he says that, I like stick my leg in front of his leg to trip him. Oh, what about your wagon? He's, he's uh -oh. refreshing. He's refreshing. He's doing a little refreshing. I know, but his voice is lagging too. His voice yep, was lagging. I think his internet's true. fucked. Okay. Oh, Neil, you're back. He fails. Boom. Okay, I tripped Neil, one of four. Need, buying him need some to space. Refresh the emix. There you go. There you go. Nice. Okay. You're back. Right. Uh, the the man has been tripped with the pitchfork. Hits the ground. Eats shit. Um, there's a couple other folks that are running. They don't have weapons, though. We're going to flip yep. over to Arrakis, and we'll come back to you and Grau in a moment. Um, Arrakis and August. Yeah. You've been backing up, because there's a mob of angry people. Yeah. Like, ang like really angry people showing up here. Um, and you have been retreating and retreating. And you've been uh, yelling and arguing. Heated words have been exchanged. I'm still Flung arguing poop. with them. Yeah, still arguing Flung poop with them. has been exchanged. Rocks have been exchanged. Um, but all of a sudden, someone you know shouts that they're stealing the full, and half the crowd turns to look. The other people just do a quick glance and then look back at you. Someone in the crowd makes the deduction that this is a decoy, right? That like someone yeah. comes up and 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 rages everyone, and then the full stolen. It's I wasn't gotta be a plot. The, the stolen full, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm ready for it. Yeah, the connection gets made. And someone will level a pitchfork and ignore August is going I to go him. within your strike range. You attack him. Yep. The glaive comes out. Fuck. Roll a hit. Wait, no, really? 15? It's a hit. Roll me damage. Four. Minimum damage. Nice. Oh, they have five HP. They do not die, but they are wounded. They drop the glaive. Uh, they back drop up, the pitchfork and they you. back up. Mm, morale check for the remaining people. 2d10 minus... Uh, eh, they got numbers on you. Minus one. Nope. No, no, no. They back up. They're, they're all immediately... Space is created all around the two of you. Um, they realize that this is actually a dangerous thing, but they see your faces. They study your faces. They're angry. And you know... You know this story is going to spread like wildfire through the local villages and towns. Um, but you can back out towards the gate. If you want. I mean, I think I have to. I, I shout one last insult at these guys. I say, you don't know what you're talking about, sir. I am a wizard. I know of these things. What are you, a sheep? You belong on this farm just like the mules. <laughs> Why is he still going? <laughs> All right. As you back up towards the gate, Mr. Mooton, I need you to give me a perception check. All right. 23. Oh, it's beautiful. You're doing the, the backing up to the gate, taking a glance around as you go, making sure your footing is good. And that's when you see one of the two kids, you know, the 12 to 14 year olds that were at the front gate taking donations from people has pulled out just a small little knife, just like a little, you know, I'm going to whittle some wood. I'm just a kid with a kid's level knife um, and is at your back entrance. They're near the money pits, the, the, the money baskets, and they've got a knife out and they start heading towards Arrakis from behind. I'll call out to the kid. If you get in my range, I'm going to kill you. You better run. The kid is coming for Arrakis. They're too stupid to understand. When he gets in the area. Wait, 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 wait. They wait, do wait, not wait. value Let their life initiative. yet. Let me roll initiative. So I'm going to cast right, a spell. We can roll kid. initiative after each other. Okay. Let's do it. Arrakis, you'll get your spell off first. I Plenty point time to this child. I say, do not approach me, child. I am not responsible for the bad choices of your parents. Flee. Holy shit. <laughs> it's so badass. I cast Spook at the child. Uh, is there a saving throw? Um, yes. The child makes a saving throw. 1d20. It's a failure. It's a wild, uncontrollable failure. They you drop the kid, knife. Yeah. They scream. They run the other direction. The two of you can escape the farm. The party is mostly free. We're going to go back over to Grau and to Renatus because Renatus, you've tripped the one guy. There is Grau in front of you, full under arm. He's headed for the fence that, uh, you know, lines the, the street or the, the pathway, really, that would lead back to town. Um, 
There's two or three other people nearby running after him. What are you going to do? Yeah, I'm jogging after him, and I'm I'm yelling obscenities. I'm like, halt ye devil, goat stealer, defiler of animals. Uh, <clears throat> and I'm selling it my best. And um, I start slowing down a little bit. It's like, I'll catch you, you bastard. And I slowly, I'm like glancing over my shoulder, getting slower and closer to some of the other like people who are mm-hmm. running. Mm-hmm. Um, Absolutely. <clears throat> And I fall to the back of the pack of people who are running. Mm-hmm. Um, and I take out the guy at the back. I fucking stomp his foot as he's running to trip him up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. No, I don't. No, no, no shanking. No shanking. I, no, 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 yeah. no. We would no never. Shanking. No, that's that's wildly out of line. I, um, I, I, I fake a coughing fit and I'm like, <laughs> and I bump into him. And I, I stomp his foot as we're running. You give him a good stomp, but he just sort of like sways with it. He recovers on his saving throw and he will continue the bolting. By now, by the end of that second round, um, Growl will have gotten to the far fence. He'll have chucked the fall over and jumped over himself. The crowd you're running with is catching up. Um, the person that you bumped into doesn't think you're trying to stop him. He just thinks, you know, the man bumbled a little bit. We're not, you're obviously on the same side. Yeah. Uh, and people. Your folks that you're chasing are starting to climb the fence and go after Grau, who's still around ahead of them. Yeah, and I, and I start, as we get to the fence, I'm like, head him off that way, head him off that way, and I point the totally wrong way, and I'm sure there's a couple <laughs> oh, of dumb people who nice. go the wrong way. Yes, like give a me a charisma a... check. We can catch up at the forest. 25. Oh, nice. nice. There were three other people with you. Um, you say cut him off that way. Two people go that way. One person and you go the other way. <laughs> it's just one person. And you know, there's folks way like multiple rounds behind you that are chasing, which they're going to give up the chase pretty soon. They're they're too far behind to really worry about. But there's one other person who's hot on the tail of Growl. It is uh, an older woman, not like ancient old, but you know, um, her age starts with a, a late She's five or an early days. six. Okay. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. I'm sure. Like me, I don't know how good she is at running. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna wait and see how far she gets. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, see. Well, she must be some sort of marathoner or some sort of athlete because she's in her late fifties, early sixties, and she's beaten the rest of these runners. She gets to the fence, one hand on it, rolls a, a dex check, one d twenty plus twelve. Um, ooh, ooh, eats ooh. shit oh. in her attempt to uh, vault the fence, and never mind. We're free I, I slowly vault the fence, taking my time, mm. and I and I and I tenderly lean, lean down beside her, panting as I'm out of breath, and I say, "Are you all right? Are you all right, Get Miss?" The fall. Don't worry about me. <laughs> and I and I and I stand up in confusion, and I'm like looking, like, oh, which way did he go? He's right there. She and begins I, to get to her feet again. I I, as I'm about to take off, in my confusion, I fucking stomp her hand as I like take Ooh. off. Oh. Give me an attack roll of plus four because she's prone. What do you, what do you want that plus four? What you want my attack bonus too? Is that a plus you, six Just total? your basic attack bonus. Just make a basic attack roll and we'll add four to it. Boom, Fucking 90. easy peasy. I yeah. stomp her hand and I assume she cries out in pain. Uh... Yes, she cries out in pain, but her hand does not break. No broken no. bones, just pain. I say, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And I'm like, I'm Get totally. Get up, you fool. Run. Okay. And I'm just, I'm All buying right. time. I'm buying time. Great. <laughs> All right. Well, the party can flee. Um, there will be some people who will chase after you for a little bit, but between the weapons and the speed and the head start, um, pretty soon it's just y'all running down the road. Now, there's some other problems that are going to come along with this. If someone is running down the road, holding an animal under their arm while other people are chasing after them, other people on the road are just going to assume that you've stolen an animal. Probably not like a sacred animal, but like you're just a thief. You're just an ordinary run-of-the-mill farm thief or or chicken thief or whatever. Um, So this is suspicious activity. You're going to encounter someone coming down the road. Someone who's um, maybe a farmer who's had stuff stolen. Someone who's... Mm -hmm. Can empathize with the people from whom you are thieving and growl you got this this one mule child on your arm and this person sees what's happening and they take just their their regular old walking stick they're uh you know who are we dealing with here 
Yeah, it's a, a gentleman who's just got like a walking stick that you you have as you walk through the farm, the, the fields, and the uh, the countryside. And he'll put the stick wide on the little path and move left to right, like getting ready to block you as you come. Uh, and we'll call out to you, stop! What are you going to do, Grau? This person <laughs> is readying an attack and is holding the path. I'm going to describe this maneuver to you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I want to throw the foul over him, <laughs> roll underneath the stick, get up, catch the foul, and keep running. A foul is a chicken. We're carrying a full. It doesn't matter, but okay. I'm going to need... You got you a lot of strength, off. so you can chuck. You're going to need a dex check to roll under the thing and a second dex check to catch it. I need two dex checks from him. Wait, does he not need a strength? Does he not need a strength check to throw it higher? <laughs> He's got, got no 17 time. strength. Okay. We're not going to bother. Yeah. Come on, Nick. What's your problem? So just make him roll with disadvantage, then. Dex check at disadvantage is the same. Well, it's the same thing. It's two dex checks, and he has to pass yeah. both. Yeah. Pass both. Mm. Yeah. He said pass. I think it does <laughs> matter which of these things he <laughs> fails, because if he that fails the does. throw true, or yeah. the roll, the outcome That's true. Matter. The first That's one true. is the throw. All right. Uh, the, sorry, the first one's the roll, the second the roll one's the catch. The roll and then the catch, yes. Yeah. Okay, roll. It's okay. I'm throwing. <laughs> the donkey is no. now in the air. <laughs> I'm rolling. <laughs> 19. Ooh. So you go to duck under, and instead you're going to end up running right into him as he swings okay. his quarter staff at you. Uh, oh, no. Bonus to two because you're trying this rolling maneuver. Um, 13 against you. I think it's a hit. I have 13 AC. He will smack you for six points Ooh, of damage. What the <laughs> fuck? And the quarter staff Holy comes right shit. into the crown of your head. What? Smack, and that will end your action, and you will end up prone underneath this person. I need the two of you to roll initiative. Next round, after this round completes, um, uh, does the full uh, need to roll if it like fucking breaks its legs? Yeah, we will deal with that after we get okay, <laughs> No, wait, that's a rounds a minute. The falls already hit the ground, surely. Well, we're but yeah, we'll deal yeah. with it. We'll he deal has with to it. check the full after, you know? Yeah, um, so you're gonna go first, Growl. You can get to your feet or whatever you want because the guy is slow with his quarter staff. Okay. Um, what are you gonna do? <laughs> you see the foal is eating shit in front of you on the ground, but there's a man standing over you with the quarter staff, ready to pound your face into dust. Neil. Red. <laughs> uh, there's Good nobody man. else on the road, right? Oh no. no. There are witnesses. <laughs> oh, there are witnesses? Fuck. Yeah. Just, just, that makes, how, just run how many? You know, on this section of road that could see you at this point in time, somewhere between like four and eight, you weren't paying a ton of attention. You know, you don't know where attention is, but something like that. Half a dozen. Okay. I have my own quarter staff. Yeah, it's probably tucked under your, the other arm that wasn't carrying the full. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Kill him. Time Wait, isn't uh isn't um Renatus there too? They were running. Renatus is coming up behind. He's, up. he's a round or two behind. Yeah. Hurry, Ooh. Growl! What are you doing? I'm gonna I'm gonna make an attack with my quarter staff. Oh, oh critical miss. it's his natural one. You get to your feet, you go to swing at him, but you're all discombobulated from the bop on the head and your swing goes super wide and the guy, no longer any bonuses to hit, will just swing his staff right at you. Oh my God, that, hold on. That has periods after it. That's not a real one. There we go. An 11. That's yes. a miss. Yeah. You like You're in human form now. though, aren't you? Yeah. Isn't your human form AC just 10? I your bear think... form has 13 AC. From all that thick fat and fur. Uh, in yeah, human it's... form. It doesn't say so in my notes, but I think we talked about this. Yeah. So he just smacks you again with the quarter staff. You get nailed. Quap! You get nailed right now, Pichel. Yeah, you get nailed. Yeah. Classic that's, nailing. That's a nail right <laughs> That's classic <laughs> nailing. Mm. Um, now, now to determine status of, of our dear friend Fole, who was <laughs> chucked high in the air and then landed on the ground. 
The mule's gonna be fine. It's probably gonna be fine. The guy's hunched over. He didn't have to throw him that high. Yeah. That from that's not accurate, but this guy's accurate. a that's fucking accurate. warrior. From now on. The foal trusted me. It knew what I was going to do. It was going with my action, and it knew it would it would have to land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it it rolled. It was a risk. The yeah. foal rolled like rolled. with grace. <laughs> Give the right, foal a dex check. Dex check. <laughs> what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a saving throw versus death for the foal, um, and nah, then if it fails, vicious. if it fails, we're gonna roll on the critical hit table, and we're gonna have uh, bludgeoning damage right. versus Wait, what's animals. What's the foal save versus death? The guy uh, was crouched. It was just a spirited toss. You I didn't tossed fucking, it high enough so I didn't that you fucking could alley oop dump the thing into the no, fucking no, ground, no. Neil. You okay? Shocked it. You hang shocked on, hang on, it. hang on, hang on. What's it's the save? It's a baby <laughs> animal. With, it's it's like a you said seven it's likely, higher. It's most likely going to be fine. The it's save you're talking about fine. is like a five percent pass rate. Okay, it's a. Yeah, it's a 20% pass rate, and then you Wait. roll a 2d4, and on a 1, 2, a 3, nothing's going to happen. That's fair. And above That's that, fair. it's going to be knocked down, or okay. reduced That's movement, okay. or a foot or a okay. wrist is going to be broken. Okay. It's going to yeah, be this fine. Is, this is all fine. I have calm animals and everything. We can deal you with know, this later. Robust. You can also yeah. heal it. You have cure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's options, okay? Yeah. Roll, roll it, Neil. All right. I trust in Neil. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, uh, teacher! Teacher! <laughs> okay, so it actually needs a 14 or higher on a d20 to pass its saving throw, which is not bad. Oh, Mr. Moon, why don't you roll it? It's got like oh, you know, it, one and a half hit dice. I'll roll it, Neil. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Oh, it passes its save. Let's it just go. hits the ground, and it's fine. It's fine. It's it fine. It tackles the guy from behind. Yeah, it does, does it not. attack him? <laughs> it does not. It just gets to its feet all confused and wobbly-like. Um, I rock this up round, next round. You're coming up at the end of this round. You can take an action, but I roll up and I'm like, my foe, my foe. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, get him, get him, and I scoop the foe up. Well, uh, hold on. You you are gonna arrive at the very end of the round. Oh, I need okay. Grau to roll initiative against the miscellaneous Good Samaritan farmer who you rolls know a it's seven. It is ass. It's your turn again, Grau. What are you gonna do? This is. I got 10 AC in human form. We're not. Said four witnesses. Don't forget, you can just run past the guy. And pick Whatever, up yeah. And continue on. Yeah, I guess I don't have, have to, to fight him. Huh? No. You don't have to fight this random civilian, but if you leave, he will get an attack of opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's fine. Also, okay. are you gonna let a random old man on the road beat you with a quarter staff? Yeah, I don't give a <laughs> shit about is. this guy. Grout doesn't have. You don't have go. pride. No, Grout, he's a fucking bear, Neil. He's a bear, Neil. Pay attention, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, he's gonna. Recovering from the whack to his head, he's like, What the fuck am I doing? And he just turns the foul and uh, tries to run to pick it up again. Great! He swings at you, back attack plus two to hit. That's a 14. He smacks you on your mm -hmm. ass. Yep. Four. Another five <laughs> points of damage. Jesus. It's another amazing blow to the back of your head. You stumble forward. You grab the foal who's looking up at you a little bit dazed. Um, you know, legs are wobbling. Uh, and the man, you know, is looking at you. He's already hit you. He's going to start running after you. And as he comes to run after you, coming up from behind him is who other but Ren. Ren is approaching this old man who just beat you over the head for, if I'm not mistaken, 13 damage total? Oh, this uh, old man, man is a like, yeah. god. Yep. You would have killed 14, him. 14 lad. damage total, Neil. 14 damage total. All right, yep. well, you're coming up behind him, Renatus. What are you going to do? Uh, I fucking rock up, and I tackle this old man by accident. No, uh, I'm running up, and I'm like, wait, the, the foal, the foal, get the foal, that's my foal. And I'm like running up. Um, and mm, I just act mm. like I didn't see the old man, and I shoulder check him um, as Excellent. I'm running from behind. All right, um, you're gonna get a. I'm gonna give you a plus four on this because he's completely unexpecting it. You're not just a back attack, but he, you know, he's focused on this other person. He thinks that you're a uh, someone who would never do this. So you have a you know surprise and all that jazz. Make me an attack roll at plus four to hit. Okay, uh, one d twenty plus four plus two plus, plus two is my two. base modifier. Yep. Boom. Yep. 21. Oh, easily. You check him with the shoulder. Give me a strength check. Uh, strength check. Ooh, might be harder. Yeah, 27. Oh, Fucking. he eats shit in the dirt. He just like topples forward, face full of gravel, uh, and party. I eat shit too. I roll with it as if mm. I didn't mean to do it, as if I wasn't looking. I don't want it to look like I just mm. body checked him. I want to make it look mm. like I fucking collided. 
Um, Excellent. You eat shit, he eats shit. By the time everyone's up, Grau's just down the road. And then Arrakis and August come after you all, and I think this no, is no, the end of our I don't think, I don't. I don't think that we necessarily go and hang out with them. No, but we you're don't. all headed generally in the same direction. Yeah, yeah, right? that's fine. And yeah. this is the only trail in that direction, so the party can escape the farm and escape the countryside with the full in tow, and a few miles down the road, we can all find a know, little copse of trees and right catch our full? breath. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Okay, yeah, definitely. Right this, is, this is the one that everyone was gathering around. Yeah. 100%. But that would be really uh, funny. It would be it would funny be if the people were like, in short, like they just used any old fall, but then kept yeah. the real divine one in the back just in case something happened to this one. Like, Ooh, like, like, just like they do with the Mona Lisa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I'm not smart enough to think of that, so definitely don't worry <laughs> yeah. about it. Um, um, but we're so, going to take our first break yes, right exactly. here, and when we come back from our break, the party will gather together in a copse of trees. Whoever was the first one, let's call it Grau, um, can you find a spot off the edge of the road and, and signal the rest of the party as they come by to come over so they can regroup. Easy peasy, yeah. lemon squeezy. Patreon.com slash Saber Die. All right, here we are. In the copse of trees, off the trail between the farm and the town party gathers around the full i think speak with animals has worn off by now yeah i didn't short. realize yeah. you were gonna take it no uh yeah me neither but I, your guys' distraction was so good <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to take the opportunity when i was arguing with those guys in the crowd there i think a few of them might have sussed that i was trying to make a distraction i don't know if they got a good look at you but they definitely got a good look at me so whatever the next stage is I, think I should keep myself out of it. Rackus, you um, shouldn't be so reckless next time. I had to defend you, and I almost killed that guy. Yeah, well, good job that you didn't kill him. At least he looked like he was he was going to be okay. Neil, yeah, I'm going to change bit carried into... Away. I'm going to shapeshift into orc form and do my shapeshift healing for one. Nice. Excellent. Faith. Can you make me the shapeshifting sound, please? Okay. Bear. <laughs> Is there a reaction from the foal? <laughs> Um, it startles, it sniffs, it relaxes. And then... Orc. Excellent. Um... Okay, so I definitely can't go back anywhere in human form. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah, Maybe... Uh... We can spin a story... That I saved the foal from the thief mm -hmm. you had no choice but to bring it back to its mother yes or go ahead wait couldn't you just say that you were in human form and you heard martha tell you to take the foal that sounds risky you've already yeah. demonstrated divine interaction with these creatures this could work play into their beliefs i think we could make this work what do you maybe maybe i'm wrong no. i say okay. we just i say we just never show the foal to this town you go mm. with the smell of the foal you talk to the mother and then get out i do think that is a clear good option where's this town at again koibu sorry Nick. what where's this town at for the uh well you're here in Jaden. this is the town where the dog at. is at that's where the, the mule is, and you were in the farm just down the road. Got it. So, right, just, I'm painting a plan here. We wait a bit. The temple where the, the mother mule is, they're all going to be freaking out right about this. The, the fawn's been stolen. Some mm. crazy shit has gone down. Uh, you go back there. They already saw you speak with it once. You speak to it, and then you'll be like, it can sense that its child is in danger. And it knows which direction it is. Me and my friends are gonna go look for it. We go and get it. We bring it back. We're like we found it, and then and we do the second part of the plan, which was to like get the mother to come with us because we've got the baby. Okay, okay. I don't know if they would just give her to us after that. Yeah. I mean, they would probably be thankful that we rescued the foal. So we would probably we would hide the foal somewhere, and then yeah. I would go back. 
rescue it. Problem yeah. is, I stole the foal in the same form that I showed up at the temple. Mm. As. But I don't know that anyone really got a good look at your face, did they? I mean, if we're quick, because it's still the same day. This is out of character. It's still the same day, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we're quick, we could get to the temple to. Oh, he just changed from human. Oh, okay, no, but did, but did anyone see Grau's face? I mean, no one was looking at Grau until he was already across the fence in the next field. So people that saw his back. true. It's my face that people remember. That's true. That's true. And maybe mine, because I made it seem. Yeah, maybe. All mm -hmm. of us apart from Grau, actually. Mm hmm. If he's on so his own, he to over there. I change back into human. I go in. You can sense I that claim... it's in distress. Yeah. Hmm. But then, what a reason would they have to give us the mule? That it's what the it's what the mule wants is to come with us, because we've got its child. But they obviously don't care about what the mule wants. I don't know. Well, when I said that the mule demands carrots, they are, yeah. you know, they're also carrots. Yeah. The clerics, they're not in it for the gold. Yeah, they're in it for the... I don't know. The gods Martha. and stuff. The blessing, yeah. Mm. It could work. But it could also get us... Or at least me arrested. Arrested for what? If they refuse... The oh, yeah. Well, if that comes back to us, we're all in trouble. But I don't think... Rackus, why don't we just go? Mm -hmm. In the night. You can sleep the one guard on the door. We let him out and we go to um, Autumn. Yeah, we, we can do just, We could just go get the mule by force. Yeah. Are we sure it's one guard? That's, what, That's the what he said. Mule told me. Let's just do that then. I mean, that's easy. Yeah. You see Ren, I'm becoming a, tacti a tactician. Uh, I'll say, you'll be a proud leader. Or you'll make me proud by being a leader. Let's, uh, let's watch the farm tonight. And we'll act t tomorrow. Let's just spend think, the night making sure that we know what's going down. We're not going to get any nasty surprises. I think we should act as soon as possible because the word is going to get back that people are stealing um, holy the animals. holy creatures and they might up security. It's true as well. Okay. I look up at the sky. What time can I estimate it is? Is the sun still up? Right now? Yeah. Yeah, it's not even noon. Okay. Yeah, I think we should act tonight then. Okay. Okay. Agreed. Okay. We're going to go and stake out the uh, the garage that holds the mule. <clears throat> Martha's Manger is where you're headed to. It's a, a special building behind the temple. I'm a little bit behind the temple. Not too close to it, but kind of close to it. Um, where the mule is being kept. And you can go by. And it's got, you know, the little banner of Martha. Um, the two linked rings on a, a wooden board, slat, beam, post, um, over the, the doors. And there's a, a, a guard out front, unarmed, unarmored, just, you know, a person dressed in simple, plain white robes, like slight gold trim around the, the, the cuffs, um, and a, a quarter staff that they can like lean against or use to poke at things, but not really a weapon, really. Oh, and they're just standing there, keeping an eye on things. The doors are open, um, and inside the little barn are some stalls that you can see from a distance. Uh, obviously, the, the mule's in the temple right now, being worshipped by all the people. But, um, you know, here's the Martha's Little Manger. You can see there's maybe six stalls in here. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. I think we're going to wait for nighttime. Yeah. Cool. I'm going to go and buy some rations. Mm -hmm. If we need them. Um, yeah, that's it. All right. Well, we can just wait until nighttime. Anything anyone wants to do during the day? Oh, um, town. I'm going to spend a little bit of time uh, maybe altering my appearance slightly uh, and mm. coming up with creative ways for the party to alter their appearance. Um, so, like, mm -hmm. put a little bit of dirt on my face. Maybe, uh, you know, whatever my facial hair is, I'll either take it off 
or mm -hmm. change how it looks. Like if I have a goatee, I'll just leave the mustache because people mm -hmm. see people see goatee and they think goatee. They don't see like facial hair. So like if I change mm -hmm. my goatee, I'll just be going to be a little bit less recognizable. Maybe I'll find a new pair of clothes. I'll spend a little bit of silver. I'll get something a little bit more raggedy to go underneath my leather armor. So I'll spend like maybe an hour or two in the town trying to make myself look a little bit less recognizable. Yeah. You can spend some time adjusting your clothes. Maybe you, you trade cloaks with someone in the party, do a little mud rubbing, get some shears or use like the edge of a knife and, you know, kind of trim up your face a little bit, alter your appearance a smidge. Really Will that reasonable. have any mechanical benefits towards being recognized? Yeah. You want a skill check or is the role, do you want role play or are you good with that? Um, when the time comes, if we need a skill check, we'll roll it then. But I want you to not know whether or not it's going to work until it works or not. Perfect. Okay. Is how is the amount of depth I go into my costume going to help me when that time comes? <sighs> yeah. Give me more okay. depth. I'm ready. <laughs> oh, you want me to go right now? Yeah, yeah. Tell me. Tell okay. me what you're going to do. How drastically do you <clears throat> alter your appearance? <clears throat> so at this point, Ren has been like... He's been, we've been out in the rough for a while, right? Ren hasn't had a bath. He hasn't cleaned up. You ever see those like homeless guy makeover videos, right? <laughs> Where they go in, they got like scraggy beards, their hair's kind of long and dirty. I'm going to go mm. get a bath, a nice saloon. Mm. I'm going to wash up. I'm going to shave. I'm going to be fucking clean shaven. All that five o'clock. It was more like five month shadow mm -hmm. is what I had, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to be clean shaven. My hair is going to be slicked back. Um, I need nice. of like my old. I'm gonna buy new clothes, not like super nice clothes, but good middle class clothes. You know, like maybe something mm -hmm. nice, cotton, something like that. Do you have twelve uh, silver you can shell out for some new clothes and some, um, and a, a bath and a shave and everything? I'm also gonna buy new shoes. That's really important because people notice your shoes. They'd be like, oh, that guy had brown shoes on, right? Sometimes they'd be like, oh, he had weird mm -hmm. shoes. I want to have shoes that stand out. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can find some nice thick brown leather shoes. I'm willing to spend yeah. like 15 silver on the shoes alone. Oh, wow. Okay. Do it. Yes, please. So right. functionally, you're going to be like heading to a washer person, washer woman of some kind, and you're going to say like, I want to trade in these clothes and she'll take your dirty clothes and sell you some other clothes that are of similar quality for a little bit of money. And that way she makes a little bit of money. You get fresh, clean clothes. You don't have to worry about carrying stuff. Same thing. You can go to a cobbler and you can be like, yo, cobbler, I need some new shoes. And he'll take a look at the ones you've got and he'll take them and then sell you something else at a slightly discounted rate and then sell back your shoes once he fixes them up a little bit. And we've got this nice circular recycling economy where you, when you need new things, you go to the person, you sell off your old and buy the new. Real easy peasy. Perfect. So with, um, you said 15 silver for the, the, the shoes. shoes and then another 12 for haircut and shower, uh, bath, I should say, and some clothes and, you know, a nice trim and everything. And it'll take you a few hours. You get a, you have a nice spa day. A nice spa yeah, day. I have a spa day Great. and I find myself a cane because a cane is another thing that stands mm. out to people. Um, you mm -hmm. gotta, when you're building a costume, you gotta have like thing. Um, and I find like it's a, maybe it's like a nice new cane. I go to a cane shop. I find one, and if it's new and shiny, I kind of muss it up a little so it's a little knobblier. Or if it's not, I have a question I'll for you because you've got leather armor and an arming sword. Do mm -hmm. you is that is that going to work with the cane? Are you going to be like the old, the old? Well, you're not that old. You're only in your fifties, right? But you've got the armor and a sword, but like also a walking stick. Is that is that the vibe? Yeah, for sure. I'm like an okay. old warrior. That's the vibe I'm going for. Excellent. Cool. Done. That'll take you half the day at least to do all of these things. Perfect. I have reshaped my character. I want a fucking advantage on that charisma check. <laughs> when the time comes to see if anyone spots you, you are going to be the hardest one to notice in the party. Perfect. Ren, far. Because of the donkey hijinks that we just pulled earlier, uh, I think that you should maybe see where they store the fowl. They might choose a different location tonight. The store the mule. the which mule. Oh, sorry store the, the, mule. the mule sorry yeah the mule okay uh, yeah yeah I will. I, I, and I'm because I'm all dressed up. I'm like, of course, good sir. I will find the mule. I'm in character. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm being really pretentious. Marvelous. Mm -hmm. I will absolutely go find that mule. Oh, you remind me of how you were back in the palace. Good to see <laughs> you uh, feeling better. After you say that, my face will darken. <laughs> 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 all right. Will you head over to Martha's manger? Right. You're looking for the mule. Absolutely. Yep. Well, uh, actually, it's not the manger. It's at the temple. There it is. It's in the temple, right by the dais. Some priests and clerics and, and laymen around, worshippers, 
viewers, onlookers, curious people, some Verasi orcs standing in the shadows looking from a distance. Travelers. I, 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 you know, I, I schmooze. I schmooze. I glide through the, cloud, the crowd, hopefully unnoticed. And I'm... Mm-hmm. If anyone... Are you smoozing or are you going unnoticed? Those are incompatible. Uh, let, let me describe what I'm doing. I'm kind of just, I'm wandering, right? And if I make eye contact with people, I give them a big smile. I say, good day to you. Good day to you, Seth. Good day. Um, um, but so I'm like a recognizable part of the crowd. Like you could be like, oh yeah, that guy with the cane was there. But nobody knows who I am, right? Um, right. So I'm just, I'm standing out. I'm, I'm blending in by standing out. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Okay. And I am taking stock of the room. I want to know, I want to see if I can spot guards. I want to see if I can spot exits and entrances. I want to know if I can, uh, how close are people allowed to get to the mule? Um, are there doors? Are there like evidence the yeah. mule is stored somewhere else than inside the temple? Like, is there a, like, I go for a walk well, around the Well, there's the, the, the main front doors, then there's a couple other doors that lead into like, uh, oh, what's the name for the back rooms in a church? I can't remember the names, but there's specific the names for crypt, these things. The sem- no, 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 it's the, oh. It's, it, Where I the feel like a big, quarters are. There's a term. There's like a super common. The rectory or it's something like rectory, that. Rectory. Kind of that's it. Yes. Okay. Um, there, there's doors that lead into storage rooms and rectories and maybe a little crypt down below. Maybe. A, yeah. There's you can count uh, four doors out of the main area. The main front doors, a door on either side of the dais, and then one more on the right side of the dais. That's just like on the on the right wall of the, the whole thing. Um, there's some windows. Uh, and they do have glass in them, so they're kind of thick. They'd be hard to break through. There are no, like, militant guards. There's a couple of orcs wearing Verasi um, decorations, but they look like they're here more out of, like, curiosity, and they're not actually guarding this creature. They're just poking their head in to be like, what the fuck are these life hippies doing over here with this mule? Jesus Christ. Gotcha. Sort of um, so they would get involved uh, if shit broke out, but they're not here, pre- like, looking for trouble. They're not looking for trouble. But they're orcs. They love a good fight, and they're they'll find you it. know, yeah. Uh, people can get pretty close. They can get to touching range, but only one at a time can come up to touching range. Um, and then you've got a cleric, like a full fledged spell casting cleric, at the top of the dais. And then you've got some priests and priestesses around, and then some lay folk around who are like you know helping to tend and keep things in order and sweep up the poop and bring up fresh hay. Uh, so that's the that's the vibe. Perfect. Uh, yeah, I'm also going to take a, like, you know, after I'm done scoping the place out, uh, I'm going to go take a walk around, if, if it's possible to walk around the gardens of the church, if the church has gardens, mm-hmm. or if I can mm-hmm. walk around the boundaries of the church. I'm just, yep. I look like I'm, you know, a casual man. I might even make myself the target of a pickpocket. I look so well. Um, mm-hmm. I'm walking around and I'm just trying to scope out, is there like a stable on the side of the church? Is there somewhere they keep the, yeah. the mule at night? Well, not exactly next to the church, but like one building over. Like you've got the, the church and you've got some church grounds and then you've got some other buildings, um, houses and shops that are nearby and a one little storage area. And then beyond those is the building labeled Martha's Manger. And there's a trail that will lead in between this one storage building and a person's shop. Um, and that trail will then go up to the back of the church and also around to the front of the church. And then you could bring in whatever creature you want from Martha's Manger um, here into the, the church slash temple place. Perfect. Okay. So I've gathered up all that information and I'm mm-hmm. just going to like hang around the church. Um, did we have a discussion with the party about when I should come back or am I here basically till nightfall? It seemed like you were there till nightfall. But... Okay. I'm there till nightfall. So I'm just, I'm hanging around at the church waiting for Rao to show up. Mm-hmm. Oh, growl? I'm. What the fuck is the plan right now? I'm so confused. I thought we were gonna no steal idea. the fucking thing in the night. Th- that's we the are. plan. Yeah, we he's are. just making sure that the thing goes there. Yeah. Okay. I was hanging. I'm, I was making sure we knew where it would go at night. Exactly. Yeah. You're just waiting till dark, and then if he doesn't come back and report anything different, you're going to the same spot. Cool. Okay, so I'll meet him there at night. Yep. Cool. I'm an orc form, but that should be fine. We wait till night, Neil. All right. Uh, Nick, what are you doing? I'm, like, probably just hanging out until time to cast my spell. I'm just trying to stay out of it, basically. Right. Keeping myself so to myself until I'm So you and Moon are hanging out together somewhere, it sounds yeah. like. Yeah. Probably, like, on the outskirts of town, like, not in the middle of town, not in the town, not in the mm. tavern with all of the revelers, you know? 
mm-hmm. nice quiet pub where people mind their own business. No one's going to accost me for being the wizard that threw cold water on the holy <laughs> donkey or whatever. Right, right. Yeah. But okay. Then at some point they'll come and get me, and I'll go and I'll sleep on the guard. So, somebody has to watch the fall, by the way. That's what James. Oh, uh, sh- oh no, no, no that the fall. you aren't you holding on to it? Right now, I don't know if I would bring it to this. The thing I will, I will watch it after oh, you fall. go and do your thing. Yeah. Yeah, like I think we should not carry it around the town, right? Agreed. <laughs> yeah, that sounds yeah. like an awful yeah. idea. Yeah. Just carry it under the arm. Just. Okay. I'll stay on the outside <laughs> and watch it. <laughs> I'm gonna bring us to a, a very quick doodle over here and I'm gonna explain it. It should be fairly straightforward. So this building right here, this uh, red outline is the church, right? And this this big door right here is the front door that you would walk in through. And then there's like a, I don't say, like this section right here is the actual atrium where, where there's the dais and then I can't draw a mule, but here is our mule. This is a mule. Don't even worry about it. It's beautiful. It's pretty, pretty good. good. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. The, this and this are other rooms within the church. Here is the back door out of it. This purple line encompasses like the gardens around the church. Mm. These lighter purples are other people's buildings and shops that are next to church property. And this here is the barn or manger uh, known as Martha's manger where the mule is kept at night. And this has got the guard on it. And this right over here, this line that I'm doodling or drawing would be a street. And so you could like approach the manger from the front or you could take the mule out the back to get it into the, the church. So that's the, the general layout of how this works. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah. Any questions question. about how yes. this looks? Quick question. Yeah. Um, if I was leaving, could I leave like this? Or would I have to leave into the gardens of the church? Uh, you could go out this way, or yeah, there are some other exits this way. Yes. Perfect. There, are these alleys. Of course, nothing here is to scale, but these are not um, wide alleys here, so they'd, they'd be tight. But you could totally do it. You could easily walk through them. Yeah. Rao, before you go, make sure you get this uh, little guy's scent on you. Yeah, I rub the foal all over myself. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. Like a like a deodorant stick. <laughs> I like open the foal's mouth. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> So we've got August and Arrakis, the two A players outside of town. I'm staying with the full outside of town. Arrakis right. is going in. Oh my Arrakis, age. you're gonna go in with Grau and yes. Renatus. I guess Renatus is already like hanging around the area scoping it out and he's I'm going in day. with Grau, yeah. This is okay. it's it's Grau's plan. I'm I'm going where I where I'm needed. I think it's probably mm-hmm. best that August stays with the full. Ren is doing his scouting. Me and I'll go with Grau. I'll cast my sleep spell, leave, and oh. then Grau does the stealing of the mule on his own. Good. Everyone's everyone's got a job. This yeah. is sick. Okay. Great. Well, the sun sets. The moon comes out. Clouds blanket the sky. Every now and then, the moon will peek between them, shining its light down to you. The city begins to go to sleep. Light spills out of taverns. The occasional noise as a door opens and the celebrations and cheering from inside. And it closes again. And it's quiet in the streets. You can walk up in the direction of the church. You can see there are still candles burning within it. But the front doors have been closed for the night. Left open a little crack in case someone needs some sort of sanctuary of some kind. Um, There's a few people out. You know, couples walking home together. Youthful indiscretions in the streets through your children and, and, and the youths. Um, the occasional person passed out. The occasional set of orcs stomping through the city like they own the place. All right. Um, okay. So me and, me and Arrakis are sneaking up, sneaking around, yeah? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Until we see the guard, I'm assuming? Yeah, we're not yeah. even sneaking, right, Neil? Is this is this road like here? Is this like yeah, on a it, on a ma- on a main? This is path a, a road. This? Yeah, it's not a main road, but it is a road, a side road. Yeah. What's opposite the manger? Mm. Because they're an alleyway. Opposite are uh, shops and houses. 
mixed districts. So, yeah, mm -hmm. so like, could I be like here in an alleyway? Totally. Yeah. So I think I tell Growl to. There, there is a, a person standing at the outside of this, keeping an oh, eye yeah. on things. So if you're in the alleyway, it might be obvious that you're just like skulking in an alley. They might not think you're skulking about them, but you know, if oh, you can so... see them, they can see you. Same, same. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. I think probably what I do is I walk past to get the lay of the land and then I will loop mm -hmm. back around and come back through the alleyway on my own, like from the other side of the street. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I, I tell Growl to, you know, don't be near me, wait for my spell and then you go and do your thing. Let's be separate. And then I think, Neil, I just start walking slowly, casting the spell, assuming there's no one in the alley, so that mm -hmm. when I get sight of him, I basically finish casting the spell. I sleep on it. Uh, I can't move and cast, but you can well, stand can at the edge a few, of the alley. I can take a few steps and cast, no? I can walk who? slowly while casting. Why not? What we spell know? are we casting here? Sleep. Sleep. Right, so you stand in place, you cast your spell. If you want to take a step at the beginning or the end, that's fine, but not a, a nice long walk, right? The, yeah. One of the, the one de the, the power check on magic is that it is open and transparent that you're doing things and that it's pretty obvious and that you can't like secret cast spells. That's, that is one of the core checks on the powers of magic. Yeah, so fine. Well, casting you know a spell and walking around the corner to have it unleash on somebody um, is one of the things it doesn't do. Yeah, sure. I, I'm not saying that I'm out of sight the whole time. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm just saying that I'm at... I don't know. I just, you know, I'm taking a few... I'm walking down the alley slowly as I cast the spell, that's all. Okay. I'm not trying to say that I, I walk 50 yards around the corner and cast it the second he sees me, but I'm in okay. the shadows, casting sleep. Yes, I'm audibly casting magic, but I'm on the other side of the street from him. He's not got very long to react. I cast sleep on him. Okay, it goes well for you. The enemy has rolled poorly on their spotting check. Um, sleep will descend over the person. He <laughs> rolled me 2d4. Two. Mm -hmm. Minimum hit dice. Lucky uh, for you, this is just a regular bloke who's watching the stables. Uh, and he leans against the wall and slumps down and passes out comfortably at the base of the gate. I turn back around back the other way and then I look to try and keep an eye on Growl from like you know a different part of the street Growl yeah. see what's happening yeah I'm gonna start making my way um I'm having I'm still having a little bit of trouble figuring out the geography of the situation um so uh, this is the building where the mule is kept okay this is the church this right here is the back road between the yeah. two of them that leads into the the gardens which then you know, leads into the church got it Okay, I step in front of the barn, the yard, the the building where the donkey mm -hmm. is. What does the mm -hmm. entry situation look like? It's just a wooden gate, like a barn or a manger would have. Okay, I try to open it. Uh, it opens. Cool. I step inside. You can step inside. There are six stalls in here. One of them has unusual. One of them looks like someone has taken three stalls and shoved them all together, like taking out the dividers between them, and mm -hmm. then added these like tall wooden beams that go from where the, the gate would normally be all the way to the ceiling, like an extra reinforced triple-sized um, stall. And then the other cool. five stalls look pretty normal. Cool. And you're in um... half-orc form, so you've got night vision. You've got good dark vision here. Yep. You don't need to light a torch. Yep, yep. Um, hey. Neil? Obviously, I can't speak with it right now, but I'm still trying to, like, find it, get its attention, and maybe get it to yeah. smell, scent. Well, the first stall you walk up to is this reinforced one. It's right by the front door, and you can peer in and see a large cat. Okay. How much do you know about large cats? Um, I'm, I'm assuming they're not really native to this part of the land. No, they're not. Then I wouldn't know much about them. It's a big cat. Like, mm -hmm. you know, big cat, big cat. Not like a house, not a, a large house cat, but a big cat. Yep. Sort of tawny in color. Okay. 
Um, just, the next one that yeah. you go past and look into contains a, a little rabbit hut um, with a little mm-hmm. staircase that leads up to it, but no rabbit in sight, probably in the hut itself. Yeah. Um, the next stall has a cow in it. Mm-hmm. The next stall has a chicken coop, like a, a what do we say? Um, a special chicken coop that has like glass windows across the front of it so you can mm-hmm. look into the chicken coop from yeah. where you're standing and you can see it's got like a you know big soft nesty area and there's this big plump like rose colored chicken sitting on this nest with her feathers all puffed up all over the place um, witness the magical cockatrice with the head of a chicken and the body of a chicken yes <laughs> it's fearsome <laughs> The uh, last two stalls, if I counted these out right, uh, one of them contains the mule, and the other has like a little pagoda that's been risen up and has like a little spiral staircase that comes off of it um, into this big stall. And uh, you'll notice the ground around this one has boards that like meet. There's no, um, say, the, the bottom of the stall is really tightly built so that nothing could slip in or out of it. You'd have to actually climb up maybe four feet to get in or out of the stall. You couldn't even poke a finger into it. Well, the rest of them have, you know, slats with scaps between them to allow air and vision and yeah. whatnot. Uh, but this one's really tightly compressed. Rao is focused on the mission and turns his attention to the mule. Um, there it is. Hey. Hey, mule. Uh, the mule is down on all four, napping. It's nighttime. It's asleep. Um, I'm gonna knock on the door of the stall. The ears will do the like twisting, turning to listen to the sound, and then after a moment, relax again. Hey, hey, mule. Hey, mule. Nothing. You know. It gets a lot of attention. It deals with people all the time, (laughs) and here it is finally resting, and you're knocking on the stall. It doesn't seem to care. Can I somehow get into the stall? Yeah, you can just open the gate, walk in. Open the gate, I walk in, and I crouch next to it, and I hold out my foul, foul foul-smelling hand. Its eyes will open. It'll look towards you. Its nose will flare. Its ears will tilt towards you in interest. It'll cock its head to the side slightly. It puts its nose against you, and then it begins to lick you. Yep. It's me. It's me. Come on. Hey, move a little bit back. Does it follow? Make me a wisdom check. Alright. You don't have animal handling as a proficiency, do you? You're just, you just—you are an animal. I don't think I do. No, you don't. Okay, cool. Just a regular wisdom check then. I was going to give you bonuses if you had animal handling. Perfect. Yeah, you can coax the. The mule over towards you. It'll walk towards the open gate. Okay. Come on. Um, we're going to pause right here mm-hmm. because Arrakis is outside. He's keeping an eye on things. And Arrakis, you can see that there are, um, there's a group of folks. There's three people walking down the street. And one of them points to the unconscious guardsman. And these That's three it. young girls are mean high school girls because they see the man sleeping and they huddle together and they point and then they begin to sneak up on him but they're also sneaking up to Martha's manger which is the name of the barn yeah what are you going to do Arrakis if they find out that he's magically asleep or that someone's in there maybe they're going to cause trouble I want to know okay how likely is it that there's going to be somebody else walking past five minutes later? Is this like a bit of a freak that there's three people walking past us right now, or is there going to be loads of people? You are not intimately familiar with this city, but it's very possible that someone might be walking down the street every five minutes, or or maybe you know three groups of people an hour, um, and who knows when that timing is going to happen. So I'm tempted to just cast sleep on the three girls, because they only need to roll a one and a two, and they can just go to sleep next to him for all I care. Mm-hmm. <laughs> did you memorize two sleep spells? I did, yeah, I've got another one. Well, then do it. Or or save it. Who knows? Um Yeah, fuck it, I can't sleep on them as well. 
face. All right. Don't roll a two. I'm worried. So I'm not gonna roll a two this time. There you go. Oh. Well, I'm asleep. The three mean high school aged girls fall asleep. How dark is it? Uh, here. Um, the moon is passing in and out of clouds. So when the clouds are in front of the moon, it's pretty dark. And when the clouds are away from the moon and the moon can shine on you, it's uh, good moonlight. If I cast darkness here, how like obvious would it be? When the moon super the hella mega obvious. Okay, yeah. All right, I go back to my waiting location. Hmm. Great, growl. You've got the mule in tow. I lead it out. All right. You step out. There are four people sleeping near the front of the door. Wait, you can go out the back, no? Does it? You could go out the front or the back, but, you know. I feel like... Does it matter? I guess not. I mean, they're all asleep. I'm going going out the front door. Fuck it. Nice. Huge shot. You take the mule. You take it out the front. You walk down the street, leaving these four bodies behind. All right, I leave. I split the opposite direction. Ren, where are you doing all of this? You're also I, scouting, right? Yeah, I was a scout, and I guess I would have... I didn't really think about where I'd be during this encounter. Um, okay. Well, it all went really well, so I think in the end it, it worked out for you for now. I guess I'm just um, hanging around, waiting to see if I'm needed at any point, and if nothing happens, and, you know, I'm, maybe I'm walking around, and I I see them leaving, mm-hmm. and I'm like, all right, great, went great, and I just make my way with them, if I see them. All right. Yeah, I mean, I think we have a Party. meeting point outside of town somewhere. Yeah. That that's talk. where the foal is, and that's where August yeah. is, and yeah. the party heads out and meets up with August and the foal outside of town, and the sweetest little animal reunion you've ever seen happens, it. where the mother comes up, and the foal, like, giddy gallops up to the mother and there's nuzzling and there's like actual like purring sort of sounds coming it's not like cat purring but it's like a mm-hmm. 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 coming out of them as the mother and child are reunited and they look so happy christmas miracle. Done it again it is a christmas <laughs> it's just like the sweetest cutest little meeting of animals you've ever seen in your life you know we had to do some questionably moral morally questionable things today but it was all worth it. In the end, we were clearly doing the right thing. Wait, what do you yeah. mean? We freed prisoners. Yeah, I know. Fair. Innocent, innocent prisoners, and we reunited a mother with its child. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do we do? Do we, we just stay here for the night, or do we, we go leave. to... Uh, I think we leave. We go straight I think to we should leave for autumn. autumn right now. Right, yeah, the leave. sooner we get the hell out of here, the better. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. It's maybe four minutes after... You're already out of town, but maybe four minutes down the road you begin to hear church bells in the town begin to ring, which only rings in the case of an emergency. And there's like a specific pattern. If there's a fire, um, you have to be a local to know all the patterns and everything. But clearly someone is sounding the alarm that something terrible has happened. Terrible enough to ring the church bells in the middle of the night and wake up the whole town. Are we near the swamp woods? I think we should stay off the road. I think we should stay in the woods. This woods, Yeah. yeah. Uh, you can go into the woods, but you can't really travel through the woods at night. It's too dark. Someone's going to trip, fall. You're going to get lost. It's a pain in the ass to travel through the woods at night. You could maybe travel along the road. You've got some folks with night vision who could help you with that, but it would be pretty slow traveling along the road. So are we making our way down the road or are we going to camp in the woods? I think we're going to make our way down the road. I don't think we can just camp here. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're going to well, pull an all-nighter? Wait, hang on, hang on. They might send riders out along the road. Mm, yes, but I think we can deal with a rider or two. Yeah, agreed. Okay. I, I I think yeah. Let's keep going. I'm not sure Does that we can deal with a rider in or the two. Party have animal handling. I do. I do. I do. Oh wow. Okay. Excellent. This party Mules are known for their stubbornness. Handle. I want animal handling checks from the three people with animal handling to see if you can coax the animals down the road awesome. through the night. I a natural one, a twenty-four. I was smart enough to bring carrots with me. Okay, so I'm gonna fucking ace this check if I could. Fu- if the screen would load, thank you. It's yeah, doing I don't the links on strength. Too. No. Boom. Uh, wisdom minus one. Oh. Okay. I failed. So, 
Mine you is brought mm-hmm. carrots, but they've been pigging out on carrots all day long. Mm-hmm. Yours is not sure. a 24? No, it's better than a 24. It's a... Uh, oh. It's will, willpower minus one, right? So it's yeah. a 31. Yeah. 31. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Well, you can keep the animals moving all night long. They normally would want to stop, but with a 31 on your animal handling mm-hmm. check, you can do it. We can go down the road. And it won't be until the next day that you really have any signs of trouble or encounters of any kind whatsoever. So why don't we take our break? And when we come back, we'll see what happens on the road to Autumn's Tower. On the road again. All right, everybody. We're on the road. It's nighttime. The night goes well. The daytime hours come. And some of your fears are not entirely unfounded. There was commentary, questions about what are we going to do when a writer comes? And that's probably something that's going to happen, right? If this is a big enough issue to sound the alarm bells at night, certainly someone's going to send out writers the next day to spread word or search or, or something, right? This right? is all according so to plan. plan. We get so a free horse is... now. Plan. <laughs> True. Free horse. <laughs> Free horse. I could well, bring him. I'm out of sleep spells, so. I think the general plan is uh, what well, we're talking about it on the road. It's like, what do yeah. we do if a yeah. uh, what do we do if a rider comes? Arrakis, well, just... do you have any spells? Mm, I'm out of uh, sleep spells. I mean, I, I have some spells for fights, but I'm not sure that we want to kill a rider. Um, what, what, what spells do you have? Defensive spells, um, a chill touch, mm. darkness, dancing shadows. Well, if a rider comes, we, I mean, what is he going to do? <laughs> we have the donkey. Is he going to attack us? We could go into the forest and just skip over this issue almost entirely. Well, what we could do, we, we could go to the forest. It is an option. Alternatively, uh, myself and August could... Uh, set ambushes uh, to scare off riders as Grau and Arrakis lead the mule and fall away. Like, they seem to be listening to you guys for some reason. You are handling them quite well. Yeah, that's an option. But maybe what if we just march a couple of miles into the woods and make camp for a day and head back mm-hmm. on the road tomorrow? I, I, I like the idea. I think it does avoid the problem. Um, I do, it might open up a new problem, which is now the riders get ahead of us and people will know about us coming. It's true. They're going to get ahead did, of us anyway um, before we get to autumn, eventually. What if the rider oh, comes up the road, right? And you guys start going to the side. I assume the rider's going to maybe go past us. And if they go past us, uh, we, me and Ren, we can just pull up a rope and then it'll hopefully catch the horse and then they'll, they'll fall. And then what? We'll catch the and rider... Then, be- beat up the rider. We, we don't to have death. to kill him. Yeah. You know, we beat him into submission. We'll... Steal the horse. Quick, Boom. Listen, Quick listen, note listen. About the rope plan. Yeah. Um, either you have to walk on either side of the road holding a rope between you, or someone's going to have to run across. Like at some point, you're going to exactly. have to deploy yeah, yeah. the rope, yep. and that'll probably be seen really well in advance. That's not something easy to hide unless mm-hmm. you're you're camped in one spot, not moving with it already hidden to deploy when they show up. But okay. as a, a moving strategy. Um, they would have a pretty good chance of spotting it. Yep. I, that we know would, these the lands rope quite thing well. would have to be ambush. Agreed. Mm-hmm. We, know, we know these lands quite well. Why not just camp for a day or two, let the riders get ahead of us so we're not going to get caught on the road. And we can just walk back towards him away from the road. We don't need to go into Keygate. We don't need to go into the cities. You know, We can just make our way through the wilderness, deliver the mule towards him, and you know, any fighting that needs to be done, if we have to fight bandits or goblins on the road, then we can kill them. I'd rather really, really, as well. I'd really rather not kill another god. Okay. Yeah, um, I'm fine with that. I I, I like that plan. Uh, All right. And Ren will turn to the forest and say, "Should we go to the forest now, or try to make good time on the road and then turn?" I look up. It's starting to be morning. I think we should go now. Let's go now. Yeah. 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 Great. Okay. This is a surprisingly reasonable, well thought out, and effective plan. <laughs> Just take sober. your time and We've travel off the road. Over the last two couple of days. Wow. Yeah. Time. Yeah. Nick, roll me a D one hundred. Oh, thank you for inspiration. <laughs> oh. Roll a one, I dare you. Oh, this is an encounter check. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am going to roll a three. I think. 
Oh, 50. Perfect. That's fine. The That's... plan goes fucking great. Three to five days later, you get to Keygate. Maybe six days later. Who knows? Time doesn't matter here. You get to Keygate. I think we want to go around Keygate. We don't want to go through it, no? We might have um, to go through Keygate. I don't we're, know. We're, this one. we're really going to go through Keygate? I'd rather not. If we can go around, then we should go around. Looks like we can go around, no? In theory, you could walk around and like just walk on the other side of the Keygate wall between Keygate and the swamp until you get to the area where you can thread the pass through. Um, like That's... that could be done. It would be weird and unusual for people to emerge from the woods and not pass through town, but yeah, but in... the donkey people have probably already yeah. came over. It's a whole thing. So I yeah. think let's do it on the let's do it on the outs. I think yeah. That's better that way. Redo your guys' spells. Growl probably go to full HP, I would assume. Yeah. Can he heal himself? He's past time. It's fine. Everyone can be at full HP, full resources. Cool. Um, I'm going to roll some checks over here. Don't mind these dice. I'm um, minding those dice. Oh, God. Wait, Neil, I forgot to ask oh something God. last session. When I was in the main town, could I have... Oh, no, wait, never mind. Sorry, I already asked you this. Carry on. Excellent. Well... It goes well. You get some people heckling you from the city walls of Keygate as you're walking on the outsides of them, like clearly avoiding going into the city. It's a little bit weird behavior. Like clearly you don't want to go in town, but also you're headed into the swamp. So no one's going to come and chase after you. Like I flip them off. Fuck them. Yeah. I warned the party. You flip off the guards? Well, oh, wait, you said on, people. You, wait, 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 you said people. I, I thought it was joking. just random people. Okay. I'm just um, joking. <laughs> this car is you were about to get off. Neil uh, his life flash before his he eyes. Tried. <laughs> <laughs> we're not out the woods yet. There's plenty of things in this swamp that might nab the mule before we get to Autumn's Tower, so just keep a close eye on it. Um, right. And I think Mr. we Moon. walk around the mule, Neil. I encourage people to form a sort of square with our bodies around the mules. Um, right. also, and the dogs. Mm -hmm. For, for this it. day, I will again prepare uh, Speak with Animals. Mm -hmm. you wanna, you wanna, would you like to speak to it? Yeah, I just want to have a quick chat with the donkey and the baby so we're on the same page. Um, yeah. We cast a spell. Hey, hey, friends. Hi. Okay, so listen. Um, I'm really glad that both of you are together again. But there's a lot of people out here, a lot of humans that are trying to get you and try to split you apart again. Okay? Well, I don't want to leave my child again. Yeah, you would. I I don't want you to have to do that. I will be so, tolerable. So, I have a friend who will take care of you and make sure that you guys don't split up again and who can protect you. And you just got to make sure that we Aren't get you there my together. Friend? I'm your friend too, but I don't think I can protect you for that long. And, um, you know, you're special, you and your child. And I'm special too. And our friend, my wow. friend, can help us figure <sighs> out why we're special. And if we can figure that out, maybe we can stop the humans from coming after us. You're a real nice person. I, well, I'm not a person. Um, you might have already smelled the first time that we met. I'm. I I whisper into the mom's ear so the child doesn't hear. I guess the child already knows. Fuck it. I'm I'm a I'm a bear. A, a bear. A bear. And I learned to talk to the humans. And let me tell you. Uh huh. The humans are very often not nice to us animals. You know that. They always make me walk. Yep. And we special Gotta animals. I pull a heavy thing yeah. all day long. I don't they, like pulling the heavy thing. They make you do that. Yep. They shouldn't. Nope. So we gotta stick together to make sure that they can't do that again. They can't split you guys apart again. You're so nice. So let's just, just make sure that we stick together and we get there safe, okay? Okay. We'll make sure to protect you. Just stick with us. Yep. Alright. Um, you can walk in the swamp. Mr. Moon, roll me a D100. See it, mates. Alright. 70. This is like the most well thought out <laughs> and well executed plan I've ever seen. You get into the swamp. 
with ease and half a day's walk into the swamp, like two hours walk into the swamp, no one counters, and you find who else but Autumn herself waiting for you on a little dry patch of land in the swamp, ready to escort you the rest of the way. Interesting. Um, but she'll meet you there with her arms open and wide and beaming with a smile on her face like she's been waiting for you the whole time and says, Oh, dear friends, I'm so glad to see you here. And you've done it, right? This is it. This is what we've talked about. It is. It's uh, the mule and the child. Oh, you know we were coming, August, uh, Autumn? I am so pleased with you. Thank you so much. Oh, you're muted, Nick. Come on now. Autumn. Say, so, you knew we were coming, Autumn? I was expecting you. Good. Swamp's dangerous. Always use an escort. Autumn. You will take care of these two, right? Of course. The mother was very Haven't upset I... that they would that they split her from her child. <sighs> You'll make sure that they all stay together. I, in all of my years, would never separate a mother and child like this. Yeah. I will tend to these animals and give them a wonderful life. I just have some gentle, non-invasive interests to address. Yeah. And you think this will help you understand what happened to me? I sure hope so. But, you know, these sorts of magical investigations are difficult. If you want to find a delicious mushroom in the woods, you just have to follow your nose. Mm -hmm. And if you go in the wrong direction, at least you can circle back and, and keep looking, and you can smell the mushroom, and eventually you'll find it. <sighs> but the questions we're trying to answer it's like trying to find the mushroom when you can't smell the mushroom. You you can think of places to look, but if it's wrong, you might be close or, or you might be very, very far away. So I, I want to answer all of the questions I have about you. Um, and I think this will help, but it's a process and it might not be soon or fast. Process, okay. Mm -hmm. Also, Growl, I can see that you've really come into your own, and I would like to change the way we interact. Up until now, I've tried to tend to your needs and be very careful and give you lots of close instruction, but you don't need that anymore. I still want to be your friend, of course, and help you with whatever I can. But I am going to begin behaving a little bit more like your friends do towards you. A little less careful, a little more direct, and I will trust that if you have questions, you will ask them, but I won't explain things first, except for now. This is the last time I over-explain. Do you understand? I like that. I like the way that my friends treat me. It makes Good. me feel seen and makes me feel like I'm not just a stupid bear that happened to wander into someone's house. You're not just a stupid bear, but I think you know that already. And she immediately picks up the speed with which she speaks and takes the party and leads you in the swamp. And um, let me just take a quick look at her character sheet. You will notice as Autumn walks through the swamp, she walks on the water and the mud without sinking into it. And she picks a path through the swamp that is shallow that you guys would only go up to like your ankles in or maybe your shins at most. But she just walks across the surface. Yes. Um, and when it begins to get dark and you're looking for a good place to camp for the night, you'll notice that her sandals that she wears also begin to shed some soft light for, you know, 
five feet around her. We gotta get her, Nick. No. <laughs> glowing sandals? That's not worth killing someone over. Uh, glowing sandals of water and mud walking, though? Oh, I mean... In my head, that was a spell, but man, maybe maybe that's the sandals, I suppose. Yeah, you didn't see her cast any spells, mm. and we just talked about how it's hard to cast spells subtly. Yeah. Not impossible. If it's coming from a magical item, that can be done subtly. Does she walk around with, like, a staff or anything? You have a wand? Um, Autumn's mm. equipment. Here. She carries... She's got a dagger at her side. Uh, She's got her robes. She does carry... It's not, a like, a nice wizard staff. It's like a just a branch that someone picked up recently and broke off it doesn't look magical it, okay. it's not thin enough to fight it's just like a just like to probe the depth of the water sort of stick the poking stick it's a poking stick it's a 10 foot pole a, a shitty 10 foot pole okay yep um and with that unless someone has something that they want to do in the swamp we can just cut to autumn's house yep yeah i mean i think Boom. we're just following her yeah yep. Boom. a couple days later Autumn's Tower. Wait, you know sorry, sorry. Does? So hang on, hang on. She was waiting for us two days out from her own tower. Like a day and a half, yeah. I mean, she wants like this day and a half, two days, something like that. Okay. Oh. Noted. Is there a conversation that needs to happen before we get to the tower? I see I some think, inquisitive minds. I don't think, uh, like, confronting her about that is is going to help us in any way, so I, I think we just keep it to ourselves. But as, we're, as we're walking, I'll ask, well, what what's next, guys? Well, what, what were we supposed to glean from this? I kind of asked Arrakis. Well, weren't we trying to and Grau want to meet the elves from the forest? Find out about his origins. This is what uh, Nadinus has told him to do. Did this get uh, us any closer to that? Nadinus um, told me to come to Autumn, and I think maybe we should wait for Autumn to look at the mules. And then talk to her about what she finds. It Sounds could be, bro, the, the things you have learned along the way with the real reward. <laughs> well, what did, what did we learn, <laughs> Arrakis? <sighs> Something about the, uh, you know, the spirits of animals. You fucking humans with your nebulous <laughs> language <laughs> and your stupid lessons and going back into your brain to you just... And Zagor, and just tell me, uh, wh why is it never with you humans? You have this great ability to ask each other questions. I can't, when I go, when I run into a different bear in the woods, I can't ask him a question. Where are you from? We just sniff each other and we figure it out. You can just raise the tone of voice at the end of your sentence, and then the other person can give you new information. Why don't you ever use it normally? I don't understand. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a question of perspective. I, I think... Some of the topics we humans talk about, it's more nuanced. It requires more in-depth back yeah, and forth yeah. argumentation. You know. So but, nuanced. Oh, who's going to be mating with who tonight? Oh, where where should we get the next alcoholic drink? Oh, no. What is... Oh, no. oh who, who are we going to enslave tonight? Oh, no. It's all so nuanced. Yeah. Uh, no, fair for challenge. Sure. It's a fair challenge. Yeah, Do you think well, you could mate sure. with, the, with the mule? <laughs> Uh, Grau is taken just... aback by this question. <laughs> <laughs> Shakes his head, pretends he didn't hear that. Um. Well, I suggest we, you know, we've been walking for a while now. We could, if August, if Autumn will have us, we could spend a day or two in our tower, see if she can discern anything for you, Grau. If not, well, then let's have a discussion about what to do next. Do you still want to um, visit the forest and look for the elves? I think this was supposed to help us find the elves, no? I, it was, I, want but... to, I want to see what Autumn finds out from the mule and then go from there. And if she doesn't find anything out, then... I don't know what, what Nadinus was trying to tell me, but we can... we can. I will just sink on it and we can move on to something else at first, I guess. I don't really know where else to go. I put a hand on his shoulder and say, uh... I'm sure Nadinus wouldn't have sent us here if there wasn't something at the end of this worth knowing, so have yes. hope. Yes. Surely not. Um, yeah. I uh, keep to myself to myself. When I'm in the tower, I will maybe do some spell studying. Uh, when you're in that, the tower, 
Are you able to look around for some of the stuff that Lord Sackmore was like talking about? What do you mean? I remember that you had talked that um, Lord Sackmore said like the the gates looked a certain way, and there's like mirrors inside the tower, and you know. It wasn't Sackmore. It was what I read in the. It was what I read in the tomb. I, I think that I distinct the tomb determined room. Neil from last time that based on what I read about Sigrus's tower, that this probably isn't the same tower. Is that accurate? Well, it's hard to tell because the descriptions that you got had a lot more to do with like internal mechanics and defenses, which aren't readily apparent from the outside. And on a certain level, all towers look alike, but this is a five-story tower with a ring around the third floor and a ring around the fifth floor. That's pretty similar. Um, it does have a garden. Yeah, but a lot, a lot of what he was saying about how the tower takes on the defenses, similar, like, takes on the characteristics of the wizard that inhabits it. There's not really any sign of that. I mean, I... You, say you, takes on the characteristics, but is empowered by the wizards who inhabit it. What, what I think was said last time is, obviously, the description you gave me was a very abridged version of what I read. So I read yeah. quite a great deal. I'm spending quite a yeah. lot of time here. I have, I have spent a lot of time here. I am trying to determine whether I think that this is the same tower or not. That's quite an important you know, question for me to answer, so I do my yeah, best. I think this is a, a good intelligence check to make right here. Let's You've go, got a good Nick. description. You've got this tower. And I've got time to compare and contrast. Yeah, so give me an intelligence check, and then I'll give you the information at Let's the end go. of your time in the tower. 21, easy. Yeah, or partway through, or whatever. Yeah. Um, well, day and a half through the swamp, you arrive at her tower. She's already thanked you profusely, but she thanks you again. And Adam, we'll what about your dog? Creatures... How did your dog? Did you just leave it food? I look worried. It... Well, Leaf is fine. Leaf can fend for himself, and it's taken care of. I have magical servants that can bring the dog food if it needs, but also, the dog is free to hunt from the wilds, and it's quite capable of doing so. Has this dog met the other two dogs yet, or no? Uh, no, I think they're probably meeting now for the first time. But the dog is uh, nowhere to be seen when you arrive at the tower, actually. Mm. They'll show up eventually, probably. I'll call for him, um, I'll say. Leave. <laughs> yeah. Autumn ignores you and just heads into the tower, uh, bringing the two into the, the bottom floor and leaving them there before going up behind that door that's always locked that leads into the upper floors. And um, party, yeah. you're at the tower. Did Grau ever tell us about the... Um, this is out of character. Did Grau ever tell mm -hmm. us about the autumn being like below the the floor? I think... I think we said that he's mentioned it. Okay. It just goes so through I've, my mind and then I call for the dog. When uh, when she goes to the locked the floors above Neil, does she have a key? Or is it some sort of... Does it look like a magical lock that she can just walk through? Uh, she just puts her hand on the doorknob and turns it, and she goes right through. In fact, you're not even certain it's locked. She has told you before that you can't go up there, and you've just assumed that it's magically locked. But I don't think anyone's tried it. No, no. Tried why it. would you? You're curious. is skulking. No, no, no. I mean, it's not like it's magically trapped and does lightning damage to anyone who touches it. That's not her. No, right? that's fine. It's, it's crazy. I'm not. I'm not asking to inform whether I um try the door. I. Assuming okay. we're spending a few days here, I will settle in with Thalius's spell book and attempt to learn a spell that I failed last level. Great. I just want to see about Ren, were you about to oh, touch uh, that doorknob? No, no, no. I'm not touching the doorknob. I'm skulking oh, okay. in general. And I'm, I'm just looking for, you know, I'm I'm seeing if Autumn will bring up the fact that I'm probing uh, the defenses of the tower. I'm not like, I'm just like, I'm bored. Ren's bored. He's like looking. Torpedo time. <laughs> he's he's curious about the tower. He's just like he's testing out the unseen servants. He's screwing around. He's not doing anything like I'm not doing anything that will torpedo. But I am like trying to find <laughs> stuff. I, he's trying you to just learn. want to play right up to the edge. Exactly. I am Icarus right now. Yeah. I am flying. Excellent. Um, basically, he's going to do stuff like if Autumn. Is around and she goes through a door he's just gonna like try to peek through not like obviously but like mm -hmm. try to see yeah 
yeah. what can he see through the door? And he's like, he's just, he's being curious. Um, maybe overly curious to where the boundary needs to be reinforced by Autumn, but until she does that, he is going to be overly curious about the tower. Excellent. Excellent. Rao, have you ever talked to, and I point to Leaf, if he's there? The dog? Uh, the dog is not here yet, Got it. but... Awesome later then. You think I should maybe talk to him, ask him some questions about Autumn? Well, I think, Arrakis, did you tell us about the time that the dog was, like, doing weird barks and stuff? That wasn't me. Oh, who was that? Was that Ren? I, I don't remember. I think maybe it was Grouch. It was you. Or was it you? I think, it was, I think it was Scop, yeah. Oh, well then, I will bring it up. <sighs> yeah, if you see Leaf and you can get a chance with him alone, um, there was a time that he was in the top of the castle and he was, like, barking really weirdly on command. Maybe talk to him about what Autumn does to him up there. I could... I could try, but I What's fear you? that, I fear that if I don't ask Autumn first, won't she get mad at me for talking to him without asking her permission? Of course not. We hang out with the dogs all the time, you know? Who would yeah. she care if you talk to the dog? I guess there's nothing wrong with that. No, you're just having a conversation with the dog. I can, I can try to do that tomorrow. Ooh, sounds good, and I give you a little bro fist. You know, I really like you, Grau, and I put my arm around you and get you some food. I really like you, too. I really like all of you, and I feel <laughs> like you've... Be I, I, don't, I don't know what it's like to have friends for humans. I don't know what that means, but from everything that people have told me, I feel like this is probably kind of what it's like. We're not friends, Grau. We're, we're more than that. You and I, us, we're family. I would, you know, I'd kill for you, just like I did for Arrakis. If you Family. needed me to. I, I think it might freak him out a little bit that your immediate way of expressing your your <laughs> affection for him was the very thing that he finds abhorrent. But yeah, we will talk about diplomacy later. <laughs> Family growl. Right, Arrakis? Family. Would love yeah. Know. I'm lit. Or at least as close to as I've had for the last... 15 years. Do we have a group name? What do we... What if, you know, people run up to us on the street and ask us, like, who we are? What? Group names are for bandits and stories and for <laughs> losers who think they're hot shots, okay? Our reputation is our group name. Our reputation isn't too good after being donkey thieves. Well, do you want they to be known as the, the donkey thieves? <laughs> you steal no, no. one donkey. <laughs> they're going to call us the ass bandits. <laughs> <laughs> Arrakis and the ass bandits. All right, all right. Uh, I hopefully not. Okay. Well, Autumn will come down from the tower as you're making these jokes, and she will bring down a... I actually forgot what she offered. I thought it was going to be a bag of 500 gold total. Right? Was that... It was either that, or was it a magic staff? It might have been a magic staff. I can't remember. Oh, I think she was going to give us her enchanted shoes. That was it, yeah. The, the enchanted sandals. Was it 500 gold? Was it a thousand? Actually, gold? I don't think she told you. Yeah, I, I think, think she told you me. didn't ask for the cash. That's why I'm having trouble remembering. Mm. Is that she is going to give you? Keep in mind, um, we brought her an extra thing too, and we fucking nailed it. And we nailed it. We, we did bring the baby. The baby donkey. It feels like that feels like a huge did. part of this. Um, well, you didn't know how much she was going to pay you to begin with, so she's paying you five hundred gold. Uh, Ooh, in nice. actual gold, so it is ten bags of gold. And bags of 50 gold each. I don't know how you want to distribute it, but she hands it out. Do you want to hold it's your like bags, Growl? So much fucking gold. I, or do you want to hold your own bags? I don't I don't like holding any of this. It, it's, oh. it makes me uncomfortable. Uh, Growl, I, I think would... if you want to be able to at least brush at the fringes of society, you, you should get used to having at least one pouch of gold on you. Just one. I think I want to see how far I can get without it. Okay. okay. I respect your wishes. This is an insane amount of gold, is it not? 500 gold? That's like someone just handing you 50 grand in cash. Yep. Like in the past, she's paid us like... 100. 100 and each, okay. though. Yeah. I will put 250 gold on my character sheet. Um, and then I will hand immediately 50 gold to Arrakis. We may want to consider upgrades uh, if we're going to be sticking together. Um... I kind of eye up 
uh, August. And I say, he's not exactly in the best armor. We uh, we could get him. We could afford some now, yeah. Plate is going to be too expensive, but I think this chain's fine for now. I I would like a horse. Well, well we could you get could buy a horse. Well. Maybe we can save a little bit for Groff's uh, froth. Ooh, we <clears throat> could oh, yeah. get a like Autumn, do you mind master holding on to this? And I'll hand over two bags of gold. Do you mind being like a little bank for a little bit? Ooh. It's for Groff and his feed master, 5,000. It was Groff. Oh, sorry, Grau and his feed master, 5,000. I'll explain, you know what he wants to save for, and then if we're on the road, you know, it's a little bit more treacherous, and if she could just hold the gold for us, I, we, you know, we'd really appreciate that. Yeah, I could hold it for him. August? It's too heavy. It'd probably be safer with Autumn anyways. Hmm. It does Autumn looks to Growl. Are I... you asking me to hold your gold, Growl? I would really appreciate that autumn if that's no trouble well why don't you ask for it yeah right. I can hold on to your money for you how much are you giving her uh, two bags of gold you're giving her a hundred gold pieces yes yeah if you're taking count in the chat I kept 25 of browse gold on me <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> wow how much oh sorry um, you didn't steal them you kept it with you no that's no no you're keeping it. it how much was the trough it's like 500 gold, 1,000 gold, I can't remember. Something like it's. It was like, it was really high. Is okay. there a reason why you only gave me 50 mates and not 125? Uh, the reason I gave you 50 is because it was going to be encumbered. Okay, so you're keeping 75 for me, right? Fine. You can uh, still have that 50. I've already yeah, yeah, counted yeah. all of it on my sheet. I've got, I, I put 50 on my sheets, yeah? Yep, then we're all good. Yeah, okay. I've taken um, it off mine. At some gold. point during this day, Neil, or maybe the next day, I say to Autumn, I come up next to her when she's doing something in our area. If we're if we're doing the next day, I want to do a quick scene the first night that we're in the tower. Okay, yeah. That's okay? Yep. Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay. I was going to say the dog will, will show up before then, but I don't think the order of these necessarily matters. Not so much. Does, New Moon, do you need to talk to the dog before he, before nighttime? Grau's talking to the dog, not me. Okay, perfect. Go for it, Grau. Yeah, so... I was laying down at his night in his sleeping place. He's in human form. He's feeling really sleepy. And there's some, some, some sounds from the swamp outside, but not much else. He feels this itch on his arm. He's scratching it. He's scratching it, but the itch just gets worse and worse. He looks at his skin. And it looks really bad. There's pus. It's like puffed up. What he sees on his arm looks like it's bulging and convulsing. And he keeps hearing August's voice saying, Bam. Bam. And he keeps, and he thinks back to the conversation he had with Autumn about having a child. Oh, you should consider fathering a child. Father. Oh. He keeps scratching and it gets worse. He looks at his arm and it looks like moth eggs waltzing in him. And they're almost about to pop. And one of them pops up. And it's got a little face on it. And it's a tiny little bear. <laughs> Father. Family. <laughs> Another egg explodes. Oh. It's got the face of a human. Father. Father. Bear. Family. Another egg explodes. It's got the face of a baby mule. <laughs> Father. Father. Bear. Family. More and more of them explode. He sees more faces. Gnome faces. Orc faces. Mule faces. He sees Arrakis's face. Family. Family. Another one explodes. It's Autumn's face. Father! All over his skin and his body, more and more eggs are exploding, more faces. Rao wakes up. He's in bear form. He looks around. Gives off a growl that sounds a little bit like... 
He falls back asleep. All right. Everyone can wake up the next morning. Totally not disturbed at all by what we just heard. <laughs> and yeah. uh, Leaf will show up today. Come on downstairs with Autumn when Autumn comes down for breakfast. And we'll meet your two dogs. Uh, what are your dogs' names? Cheeto, Cheeto and Nacho. Nacho. Yeah. Leaf will meet up with Cheeto and Nacho. And I think the dogs are all happily sniffing at each other and everyone's well adjusted and getting along. There's no barking or leaping or biting or, or conflict. Um, but after a quick little greeting, Leaf will hurry on out. Like this is day, every day for him. Meets a new dog and then goes on out to the garden and leaves the dining area pretty quickly. I think Cheeto and Nacho might chase after him, depending on whether like, or not they think they're going to get food from you. When I see him leaving, I kind of like nudge, like growl and just like whisper to him like, go, oh, now's your chance to talk to, to, talk to uh, Leaf. Um... Growl will slip into gnome form, be a little smaller and a little bit more comfortable, you know, around the dog, a little bit more on his eye level. Mm -hmm. um, I'll start talking to Autumn. Um, Autumn, where can I buy a horse? Back to him. Growl's going to cast Speak with Animals. Mm -hmm. He's going to go up to Leaf. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Hey. Hey there. Greetings. Oh. You're Leaf, right? I am. It's nice to meet you. I'm Growl. You've seen me around. I'm the bear. Yes. Uh, I just, I, I can, I can talk to animals now and I've noticed I've never really talked to you. How are you doing? I'm quite well. How are you? You're very well spoken for a dog. You're very well spoken for a bear. Yeah, that's true. Weird, right? This is not the first time a person has spoken with me. I'm getting quite adjusted to it. Is it the first time they've been able to understand you? Certainly not. Oh, can Autumn understand you? Yes. Who do you think I talk to? Oh. Like there's wandering clerics around. Yeah, yeah. Was, how long have you been with Autumn? Why are you curious about my master? Well, I just... I see you around so much, and it feels like you... Um, our friends have dogs. I'm a good defender. Nacho and Cheeto, right? They're around, and... I, I feel like mm. they behave so differently from you sometimes. Is it just... Are you just a different personality, or...? You could say I'm a different breed. Oh... <laughs> That makes sense, yeah. So, do you, do you like being around Autumn? Yes. My master is very good to me. Okay. Okay. Um, have you ever felt like you're special compared to other dogs? Most dogs don't have someone speaking to them. That's, I am special. That's true, yeah. I live in a swamp. I guard the master. Yeah. We talk. What do you guys talk about? Why do you want to know? <laughs> uh, Autumn has talked to me a lot, and she's taught me a lot about, you know, being around humans and all that, because I'm a weird bear, and has she, like, taught you the same? No. Yeah. So you just... Like, talk about life and stuff? Do I smell a threat? Well, I don't think so. I, I, I would hope not. I'm not trying to be threatening to you. You're inside our territory. You're asking questions. You're looking I, around. Well, I'm a friend of Autumn. Are you suspicious? You've seen me around, right? You know yes. me. Yes. I'm Autumn's friend, right? Remember? I'm your yes. master's friend. Yes. So when I'm here, you you guard your master, but you also guard your master's friends, right? Nope. Oh, okay. 
Oh. You don't have to be scared of me. I don't. I don't pose a threat to anyone. I do not fear you. Okay. I don't fear you either. What's your What's your favorite What's your favorite mead? My favorite mead. Your favorite meat to eat. Anything deep fried. Really? Yes. We have guests. Know. They come and deep fry meat for Autumn. She gives me some. I've had deep fried meat. It's really good. Have you, have you ever had a meat pie? No. Oh, you need to try a meat pie. They're so good. Next time I come here, I'll bring you a meat pie and you can try it. Yes. I would love that. Please do that. Human foods... Human foods are awesome, right? They are extremely delicious. Yes, yes. It's it so is a shame there are not natural deep-fried chickens walking around. Oh, that would be so delicious. I would eat them. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, me too. I think we have a lot in common, Leave. Really? Well, we're both animals that Autumn takes care of. I think she has a lot of you're a person. I'm... I'm an animal. Well... Grau feels hurt by this. I... I'm also an animal. I'm a bear. You've seen me. I'm... I'm... You are a druid. You are a person that turns into an animal. I am an animal. No, no, no. no. I'm, 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 a, I'm a bear who can turn into people. You're a druid who turns into animals. I'm an animal. <laughs> Ross says, w would, would a person do this? He sits down on the floor and starts licking this crotch area. Have you ever seen a person do this? Please? <laughs> huh? I have never seen a person do that. That's right. That's because I'm not a <laughs> to person. To themselves. <laughs> I'm an animal. Just yes. like you. I just, something happened to me and I, I, be, I could turn into people. It's weird. That's not how things work. Right? It's weird. We should, we should talk to Autumn about this. She'll explain. Hmm. You should talk to Autumn about this. What do you mean by that? She is smart. She knows everything. She will know the truth. That's right. She is very smart. And so are you, Leaf. You're the smartest dog I've ever met. Yes. I will extend my gnome hand... For him to put his paw into. He'll paw your hand. I'll shake it. Wait, sorry, that's shake a it. that's a person thing. I'm I'm getting confused. I'm sorry. I, that's awkward. And he'll walk around and instead sniff Leaf's butt. <laughs> um, Leaf will just stand there and let you do it. Um. Probably sniffing your butt in return, I imagine. I All suppose right. that's what a dog would do. And uh, then Leaf heads into the garden, and it sounds like you head back to the party. All right. Right. Well, party. Um, we're hanging out at the tower. Autumn finishes her breakfast. She says she's got so much to do. Um, she will load the mules onto this platform that sits outside. I, I don't know if I've mentioned it mm -hmm. before, but there's a little wooden platform that's maybe four feet wide <clears throat> and six feet long and is attached by ropes uh, and pulleys to the, the very top of the tower. And so you can pulley this thing up to get to the third floor to transport like heavy things from, from ground floor to the third floor. So you don't have to move it up a fucking staircase. Um, while so she's, load uh, the animals onto while this. she's loading it up. 
I come up to her and I say, um, you need a hand getting them out the other side? No, they can walk off. It'll be fine. Okay. I wander away. Like, I'm walking around the tower, you know, I just sort of stay there as I walk mm-hmm. past her, I keep walking. Yeah, yeah, not a big deal. You walk around. Um, it's about now that that intelligence check we had you make earlier it was a 21, which is a success. But it's a narrow success. Uh, you know what? Based on the description, this could easily be the same tower. It could be. It, 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 I'm not going to say 100% certain because you only made a 21, but it didn't the sound two like descriptions it, the, match pretty closely. But the location, they said like the north I can't recall the exact that, wording, but it, it didn't sound the like the north location. of the swamp where it's thinnest. Yeah, and this is a thin place, but this is the north of the swamp, right? Yeah, exactly. This is not the north of the swamp right now, right here. It's true, but how long north, ago? Yeah. Only the north of the swamp is up here. Has right? the landscape changed? We don't know. Or did they just mean that, like, in the northern half of the swamp, as opposed to where the tower was down, or the the tomb was down here? Is it just north of this part? Or is it the north, north end of the swamp? And is it thinnest, like, is where the whole swamp thinnest? Or where there's something magically, like, the realms between, the the folds between the dimensions are thinnest? That's why I, I'm giving you the the tower matches in a lot of ways, but you're not like Eureka. Don't don't bet your life on it. But it matches all the characteristics. It's the right height, it has a garden, it's in a swamp, it's near the northern half of the swamp at least. It's near a thin part of the swamp. Um it didn't yeah. mention the defenses specifically, but the height of it matches the uh, the unseen servants match, but Weird then again, about like the any good wizard tower was going to have unseen servants in it. Absolutely. They did mention ley lines, but you haven't been we able to find yet. any yeah. of those around here. Yeah. Um, I think at some point today, or maybe it's the day after, I want to try and catch Autumn and speak to her for a little bit away from the party. Totally. My, my plan is to, but she said she's busy, so when she's she's <laughs> yeah, not she'll, busy. she comes down to share meals with you. I'll make a joke um, to Ren when she says she's busy and is out of the room. <laughs> Oh, I wonder if she's busy like Arrakis is half the time. <laughs> that means she's doing nothing all day. <laughs> uh, after, after dinner, I will like if she's like clearing up plates or whatever. Like I'll help her, mm-hmm. and I say, um, "What's I wanted to ask you a few questions. Do you fancy going for a walk around the gardens for ten or twenty minutes?" Sure, I'll walk with you. So um, as we're walking, you know. I'll eventually say. So what's the deal with the donkey? A lot of gold. Well, it's an unusual thing. I'm a cleric. I'm devoted to many of the gods, but Martha is my favorite among them all. And this amazing creature defies the norms of society, of the way the world functions, of how the gods intended things. Mules ought to be sterile. And if this one is not, there may be something extra about it. There may be something about it that we can divine, and it might have something to do with Grau as well. Grau is an unusual creature from presumably this area. This mule is an unusual creature from presumably this area. There might be links between them. There might be mystical energies that I can see that that are present in both of them. A bit of a stretch, no? Well, most magical research starts off as a bit of a stretch. You'll understand once you start doing some of your own. I think Grau's going to be disappointed. I think he thought he was going to get an answer off the back of this. I told him very clearly that this was going to take some time, and he's going to have to learn that things take time. Mm. Yeah, I understand. Um, Maybe think about how you uh, tell him this. I think he is going to be disappointed. I, I think he's interested in finding mm. out about what he was doing beforehand, before he met mm. you. I think he seems to remember some elves. Hmm. What he you know, said. You know who they might be, or where they might be? Elves and druids go hand in hand. It wouldn't surprise me if they had a 
hand and what happened to him or how he's become who he is. These are strange times. Are they? Most of my people, and she'll brush her hair, revealing her you know, pointed elven ears. Most of my people have been evicted from their homelands or killed. There are not many around here. To be truthful, I don't know where Rao will find elves. Not welcome in these parts. I managed to survive here because of who I am, but I am unusual. She, she's a half elf, though, right? Not an elf. Yep. How? I mean, she's got pretty freaking pointed. The problem with half elves is that, like, sometimes they can pass as humans, sometimes they can pass as elves, sometimes they're pretty clearly in between. The men can really pull off that in between when they can grow a beard, but the a feminine half elf can look a lot like just a regular elf. Can I roll a wisdom check to try and determine that? Hmm. I, um, I want you to give me a charisma check at disadvantage. It'd be hard to tell this one. Oh, well, there you go. You're pretty certain she's a half elf. Yeah, okay. I didn't say anything. Yeah. Yeah. Um But she'll continue with like, you know, the elves are gonna be extremely hard to come across in this area. I if Grau knew them, maybe he's a lot older than we expect because there aren't many elves in the area. Strange. Have you had much dealing? With the elves since you came here? I'm very old. I didn't come here in quite the same way that you arrived last year. The year before. Uh, I've been around in these parts generations. How many I generations? Never last. Was... Ask a lady her age. <laughs> well, I don't suppose you remember a, a, wiz a wizard around these parts by the name of Sigris? Shadow Mage? I am. Um, I never had the pleasure of meeting him, but I am familiar with his writings. Read some of them in Palanthas. Yeah, I've read the same. You know, he's a. Uh, he lived around here. That's why I'm here. Is it? It is. I. Well, I found his tomb recently. I look at yes, her face. Yes, it's south from here. Yes. Wickish is the nearby town. I think his grandson still lives there. Indeed, I, uh, I've been reluctant to mention this to you, but we saw some very strange things in that too. Creatures from, well, not from this plane. Why are you reluctant to tell me of these things? I'm cautious by nature, and you seem like someone who has a, a penchant for finding and keeping power. So, you'll excuse me if I was a little bit cautious about giving up all of my oh, secrets. Sweetie. The day I'm jealous of things you have is very far from now. I know you try to be nice, Autumn, but patronizing is not a kind way to be. Well, let's be quite clear that sometimes you assume more authority than you have, and it's nice to check your ambition and your ego. I don't want to get into an argument. I'm not assuming any authority over you at mm. all. But anyway, I'm telling you now. Any idea why there might be um, denizens from the Plane of Shadows in the swamps here? In Sigris' tomb? Denizens of the Plane of Shadows in the Tomb of a Shadow Mage? Well, if you've read his works, he never created a portal, he never traveled to the Plane of Shadow. Hmm. What do you know of Sigris's life? He had a friend, a companion that he Indeed. spent a lot of time working with. Are you uh, familiar with this character? Yes, I am. Well, not familiar, but I've heard of them. I've read of them in uh, his tomb, Norel, correct? I do believe that's the name. He's a dimensionalist of the Red Robes. The two of them together did their best to explore some of these other realms and specifically probe the Plane of Shadows. And while none of his writings ever indicate that he successfully traveled there, 
There is a dimensionless spell. You might not have heard of it. Oh. Called... Uh, it's right here. I swear it's... Magic Mirror? Uh, no. It's called... Hold on. It's rolling. Rolling. Not right. Dimensional Tear. Mm. It's of the fourth circle. Jesus. Sounds dangerous. A little bit. It allows one to poke holes between the realms um, or temporarily reaching through uh, one area into the other. But if it's repeated over and over, it can weaken the fabric in a specific place. Mm. If you use it in the same spot over and over. Sigris's tomb... This is just a guess, but I imagine it didn't start off as a tomb, but it started off as a l- laboratory of some kind. Well, where perhaps. they may have been practicing something like this. Weakened didn't the area between the realms, boarded it up so no one, nothing that could come through would ever escape again. Turned it into a tomb upon his death. Right, that, this, that makes sense. But, uh, from what I can tell, Sigurus has a, a, a tower in the swamp. Well, that would Every wizard think. has a tower in a swamp somewhere. Well, a tower in this swamp specifically. Um, would he not be doing his experiments there? I was going to go searching for such a tower, actually. Uh, there's some clues in the tomb as to its location, but um, it's got me thinking, I say, casting a glance to the tower. Uh, maybe I've already found it. Why don't you just ask me the question that's on your mind? Is this Sigris's tower? This is my tower. Sigris was this once, once resided here. Boom. Oh, oh shit. Well, that's very interesting. Awesome. Mm. I sure would like to uh put peruse its chambers one day if you could uh find you the generosity, but I won't I won't press my luck for now. appreciate your uh, candidness. I cannot share my tower with someone until there is a good deal of mutual trust and respect. Because so while you and I have worked together, let us not pretend that there's not an edge to our relationship. I shrug. I mean you know ill will. I don't have any uh, illusions of grandeur as to the difference in our capabilities here. Don't you have nothing to fear from me. Um, Nah, you have nothing to fear from me either. But until things are softer, more dulled, more cooperative, I cannot invite you further than what you've seen. Understandable completely. Well, if, you know, you let me know how else I can help you out. Do you understand why they might not use a spell like Dimensional Tear in and around their own tower? Like I said, it's dangerous. Hmm. Have you, since we're talking candidly, in Sigrus's tomb, have you explored the, the whole thing? Including the, the chamber beyond? I have not visited Sigrus's tomb. I'm aware of its location, but I have no need of it. There's, um, well, maybe you don't have need of it, but there's a great deal of information beyond there, and some, well, interesting things that if you had the time, maybe you'd be uh, keen to take a look at. I could show you it. I believe the uh, final chamber is more difficult to reach the one outside of my own order. Hmm. Would you like to tell me what was in it? Hmm. Well, I'd 
there was a a moth, giant moth. Oh, how shocking! <laughs> that uh, it had some relation to the plane of shadow and and these strange dusty bats with formless shadowy bats. But uh, once we dealt with that, which was difficult, there was a dagger. Renatus is holding it. If you yeah, let's take a look. I believe it's moderately powerful. And there was a mirror buried in sand that showed the true showed the form of something as it would seem on the plane of shadow, if I understand his writings correctly. Mm-hmm. I mention that specifically because we got quite a shock when Brow looked in the mirror. I've got some theories, but uh, what we saw was What did you see? Pretty. Well, I only got a quick look. Uh, it was like a... Um, lycanthrope, almost, a bit half bear, half man, a monster. Perhaps something like Gra doesn't have a shadow on the shadow plane. Maybe it's an amalgamation. My best guess, maybe. Hmm. And what? Could you describe this in more detail? Half man, half bear, as in like a were bear, like a werewolf fully formed. That's what, yeah. Like I said, I only got a short look. He he moved away quickly. And half he was quite taken aback. Bear, half human, or half. half bear, half orc, or half bear, half gnome. I think it might have been half bear, half human, and half orc. That it, is an interesting revelation. I've been I'm sure there wasn't it. a little gnome in there. There might have been. Like I said, I only got a short mm. look. There could have been a quarter gnome at least. Hmm. <laughs> well, this should aid me in my investigations. Thank you for bringing it to my attention. Like I said, the, uh, the mirror, it's still there. It doesn't work outside of the tomb. Mm. So I'd show you. Perhaps you could calibrate it somewhere else. But perhaps, like you said, the space between the planes is weaker there, and that's why the mirror works. Mm -hmm. Perhaps. Well, that's the only way that I can imagine denizens of the shadow plane arriving in a spot without extra magical means. Perhaps he summoned them there or he died. Maybe. There's also spells in there. Many, many spells written into the walls themselves. That's an extremely time consuming job. To write magic into stone? Indeed. And to lock it in a chamber where. Probably Ugh, no one's seen it. What a waste. It. Wizards with too much time and money, I assume. Get up to all sorts, like uh, magical ponies and walking dogs and all sorts of mad stuff. <laughs> After a few years, one's <laughs> legacy does become important to them. I could understand wanting to leave something of yourself behind. Engraving spells into walls and all. Well, look, we're still talking about him, so... He's achieved something, I suppose. I suppose. Let's uh, let's get back and help with the dishes. I, it's been good to chat, though. Maybe dull some of that edge. I would appreciate that. Um. Okay. I head yeah, back to the, the kitchen to help wash up. Right. Well, the rest of the party can gather together and let me add up my final bits of experience here and um. Autumn doesn't have a second quest for you, but you are going to get experience points right now. Oh. And then we can figure out what we want to do from here. And actually, we'll go to break in between. So, 
Uh, starting with Mr. Grau himself. This was your quest, Grau. So you have a slightly disproportionate amount of XP. Please take yeah. home 1,700 points of experience. Base. I got you. That brings uh, me to... Let me just... Add that all up. Plus 9,115. 10,815. Excellent. Arrakis, take home 1,350 experience. Uh, really wait, quick. You... When is my next level up? 12,500. Thank you. Uh, I've learned some spells and cast some spells. Neil, can I tell you? I is. accounted for learning two spells and casting one was like a ray of enfeeblement and two sleeps. Uh, okay, the two spells learned. That should be 400 XP if you cancel that because they were both level two. Oh, uh, I take another um, 200 experience then. I thought they were both. Yeah, I only counted and then as level one. I count on myself casting seven levels of spells. So it's Chill Touch, Spectral Hand, Detect Magic. Spook just then on the guy yeah, attacked the kid attacking me and sleep twice. So I don't know if you want to. Oh, uh, I got two sleeps, a spook, and a personal perception filter is what I had. I had four spells. I didn't cast personal perception filter since we got XP last time. Uh, didn't you cast it last week? Nope. You should also have two chill touches because we fought the water elemental. Oh, I think I missed the chill touches in the water elemental. All right, so that is another... Um, Let's just call it another two, 200. 200 for the chill touches, 200 for the spell learning. So another 400 yeah. on top of that. So 1750. All right, Renatus, 1300 for you. I've got um, a pick pockets. I've got role playing. I've got clever ideas and all the quests and survival XP. And August, I've already added your 10%. Uh, you can be sitting at 1320. Thank you. Excellent. I don't think anyone is leveling right now. That happened fairly recently already. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm a far way away. Yeah. But still, anything above 1,000 experience for two sessions is pretty solid. Good pretty job, everybody. Good. We're going to go to break. We'll be back. And we're going to figure out what's going to happen next. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. So we're going to wrap up the storyline, which we've just done. And I don't think there's anything else to do here. If so, we can come back and do it. Wait, but otherwise, yeah, no, the party's going to... One, more, to thing, talk to one Autumn, more thing. Real quick. Yeah, one more thing. I need to talk to Autumn. Okay. So I think probably the next day, I, yeah. I want to ask her if, if we can have a chat for five minutes. Something I need to tell you. Yeah, what's the, the mood of this chat? Um, I think I'm a little bit apprehensive. Like, I'm telling mm -hmm. someone... Something bad news. Okay. So I'm a little bit apprehensive. Um, I say, this is probably nothing for you to be concerned about. Um, it's probably so far below your radar that it's not even something to be worried about. But uh, like I said, I, you know, I was looking for Sigrus's tower. Um, mm -hmm. I've been working with, or I worked with a local lord up north. Uh, Sackmore, do you know him? Seems like she a nasty, rolls her eyes. nasty fellow. <laughs> yeah, he seems like a little bit of a shit, but anyway. Yeah. He gave me information on the tomb, and in, like, in ta like my, uh, what I was paying for that was that if I find the tower, that I would split some of the wealth and the magic knowledge with him. I'm gonna have to tell him Probably, I'm probably, I mean, if you feel otherwise, maybe I can do something different, but I'm thinking I'm just going to tell him that I tracked down the tower. There's an extremely powerful wizard living there. Game's up, essentially. But I'm just letting you know in case he gets any ideas. I don't think you've got anything to be worried about with him. Obviously, I didn't know this was your tower when I had this conversation with him. It was not saying, but just to make the point. What are you going to say when he probes? Where is the tower? Who is this wizard? Tell me everything you know about them. I'm planning to send him a message by Ryder, so he doesn't have much chance for conversation. Do you think a man like Lord Sackmore will be 
hindered by distance between you if he wants to know something about you if he wants to track me down and ask questions he can but at the end of the day he's a smart man he's not going to go tangling with alpha wizards getting himself killed turned into a frog or some such he would be foolish to try but i'm still curious as to what you will say to him have you thought about it I have. Have you given thought to well, you be how that more, might then. play out? You asked me the questions that you're worried he'd ask, and I'll answer as I would. I'm sure you can probably do a pretty good job of channeling him, maybe. Ooh, that puts her in an awkward spot. If I'm Lord Sackmore, and I'm searching for magic to sell to others... One of my minions found a tower in a swamp that had a wizard living there. Yeah. I would want to know the colors of the wizard's robe. I look at the colors of our robes. Does it's she have red. wizard robes on? Yeah. Yeah. I That's... would ask their name and their age and the most powerful spell you've seen them cast and what you think by vibe, intuition, or divination you think the most powerful spell they might be capable of casting is? I would say that uh, this person is a female elf. Red robe wizard. Has, by all accounts, been at said tower for centuries. And it wouldn't surprise me if they had access to the very highest circle of spells perhaps fifth sixth mm. maybe even seventh circle mm. and this name you know so much about them you must know their name you know i think uh she goes by many different names ones i've had uh winter summer spring that's about it i think mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is your name a I secret? I would want a map to the location if I were Lord Sackmore. Maybe even ask you to show me if a map through a swamp is too impossible to manage. Who could follow a map of a hand-drawn person going through a swamp? You'd literally need to lead him and his men here. Well, my agreement with Sackmore was that when I find the tower, I'll share its riches with him. I don't <sighs> think I, I owe him leading him to you and he's Facts. a man to play on those nuances isn't he i don't know the chap that well i met him just the once but no he doesn't strike me as someone who's too uh concerned with politeness let's say no he exercises brutality as a method of enriching himself okay well let's say then it did get that far and he did want leading here i mean if it came down Wouldn't to it that put you in an awkward position if you have to lead Lord Sackmore's men through the swamp and I, the hapless defender of my own tower, rain down fire and meteors upon his entire squad well, I'd say I would it puts feel Lord terrible. Sackmore in an awkward position more than me <laughs> uh, yes, but I would feel terrible if you were caught in the zone of effect as would I, I would have no intention of being there when said meteors flew from the sky hmm can't tell if you're threatening me. I'm assuming you're not. I'm not threatening you, but I'm saying you might be putting yourself <clears throat> in a position of literally being in between two dangerous characters. And that is not a healthy place to be, intense notwithstanding. If it came down to that, could we not lay a trap for Sackmore? Ah, that's a very different conversation. I thought you were just here to tell me of your plans. Well, I am, but you're the one theorizing around potential meteors and mass murder. <laughs> I'm saying if it came to that. Self-defense, please. Well, no, but if you were of a mind to defend your tower with lethality, then I would be of a mind to uh, help you do that. But of you course, wouldn't share that information with Lord Sackmore? 
I, uh, you wouldn't I go to him and say, there's a powerful wizard there and she might know that you're coming and she's prepared this defense for you. What if we work together to kill her and we can split the treasure? I consider her and I say, I know I'm not your equal, Autumn, but do you think me so stupid as to take his side over yours? I think... There are many brilliant men through the ages who have been blinded by their greed and made poor decisions. I am someone who was born into nothing. It has happened upon what I little I do have through the generosity of others. And I am not one to look a gift horse in the mouth. You've done a great deal for me and my friends here. You've helped me when I was at a low point, and uh, I've got no intention of betraying you, even if it means access to the uh, the chambers of of this tower. I'd rather, uh, like we like we discussed, gain access to them through friendship rather than through murder, which in all likelihood is just most likely to result in me being killed. Are you? Submitting to me a desire to ambush and kill Lord Sackmore's men? You're escalating this beyond a level where I'm comfortable. We're talking mm. theoretics here. Mm -hmm. I will attempt to dismiss Sackmore and plus hate him as much as I can. If he really mm -hmm. backs me into a corner and forces action, then we can discuss something like that. But I don't think it does either of us any good to be uh, plotting the murder of a sitting lord. Sackmore knows his limitations. He'll likely know who you are. I think if I say you live in a tower in the swamp, like me, maybe he thought Sigrus's tower was a separate tower. I say that there is a powerful wizard that can cast maybe clerical magic living near Egate. Would that be too far? Would that be something you'd be comfortable with? I'm not sure how far your reputation spreads outside these this swamp. My dear friend Arrakis, you are free to share any and all information you have at your disposal with Lord Sackmore. I am not concerned with his likes. I am not threatened by him. If you wish to go from town to town, chanting my name, handing out maps to my home, I am not that concerned. Well, I'm more interested in what you would consider a betrayal. I have no intention of betraying you. If I can give Sackmore answers that are likely to um, satisfy his curiosity and don't cause any damage to yourself, then maybe that's a painless way out of this. But I don't want to make any assumptions on what information can and should be shared without you uh, having a chance to say your feelings on it. I release you from any information secrecy obligations. There are no NDAs here. There are no... Uh, no information is confidential. Then I'll plus eight Sackmore as best I can, and if things don't go well, I'll report back to you. For your own health and safety. Of course. My primary one concern. ought to remain as far from his men if they come anywhere near this tower. And you are free to tell him that if you wish. You'd attack them on sight? I reserve the right to defend myself as needed. But I will not share any of my defensive plans with anyone. Yourself included. Of course. Just wise uh, wizarding. Very well. Well, I'm glad I've, I'm glad we've spoke about this. I will, like I said, I'll try and placate Sackmore. It was a, it was a mistake to speak to the man in the first place. He gave me very little information that I probably couldn't have gleaned from speaking to you directly. Long as we're being so transparent, Rackus, I have checked the roles of the major mm, schools of magic, poor. of the major schools of magic in and around the area. And I have found some small records of your presence far to the northeast of here. Um, why is it that you have come here from Palanthas? 
Like I said, I was searching for Sigrus's tower. But, it took uh, you a long time to get here from Palanthas. Sigrus was known to be in and around this area. Why did it take you so many years to migrate from there to here? I didn't leave my previous role in the best situation. I was short of gold and uh, rich in enemies. Hmm. Have so they I followed you here? I don't think so. I've not run into any. <laughs> there was, uh, well, there was one, a halfling. An assassin. Actually. Hmm. But uh, we dealt with her. Hmm. Well, more to say, the swamp dealt with her. Hmm. But other than that, no, I don't think so. I mean, I can give you the full story if you want, but I am assure you it's rather boring. She waves her hand dismissively. Yeah, let's just say, you know, I left on bad terms with my former employer and uh, had to make a swift exit, meandering through the countryside, picking up gold where I could, staying in the shadows where I had to, until I eventually now made that my you've way here. found Lord... I'm sorry, uh, Sigrus Shadowhand's tower, I found it occupied by, your own words, a powerful spellcaster. Mm. What now? Well, the mirror I told you about, the spells in Sigrus's tomb, more than enough mm. to keep a wizard of my uh, limited talents occupied, I'm sure, for the lifetime of a simple human. I'm sure I could live to a, the ripe old age of 80 and not be done with all of the spells in that tomb, so my ambition. sell yourself short. If Sigrus oh. can do it on his own, you can surely do it in a faster time with some help. But speaking of things that you will be doing, are you still going to be running that shop in Swampside? I always have need for fresh components, and I can always send minions off to purchase them if you're sticking around. Yeah, I'm sticking around, but I might be spending time in the, uh, in the tomb studying spells. Uh, mm. As of right now, my gold stores are quite healthy, thanks to yourself. Well, it's but, a pity. I could use a good magic shop around here. Well, the thing is, Autumn, you're the only mage in these parts that were really buying from the shop anyway, aside from the odd traveler. I mean, I think in the course of six months, I only had two orders that went from you or Zara. So mm. I don't think I need to be in the shop. If there's specific components you're looking for, you could let me know. I could gather them for you, track them down. Well, I will. I, I can special order things, but sometimes it's nice to have a shop at hand that you that's always stocked and that you can run to as soon as your supplies run out when you accidentally burn through all that bat guano or your dog eats it and now you're left without components without being able to plan for it. It's a pity. Yes, I understand, but um, I'm afraid the life of a shopkeeper is perhaps not as enticing uh, given the adventures of the past few months. Ah, someone needs to do the Lord's work, though. Oh, well. Sure. Well, I think that's it. Uh, I see the rest of your party is getting ready to leave. Yes, I think I'll that's it. I'll walk you out. Thank you. Okay. She'll walk out. She'll say goodbye to you all. And I think as we <sighs> were talking about during the break, we can just have the party return to Swampside together. And we're going to do a little bit of a time skip. And Mr. Mooton had some questions about non-weapon proficiencies that he might be able to learn during his break. First off, I'm getting a horse, okay? Then a non-weapon okay. proficiency that I would like to learn during the off time and talk about is uh, animal training. I already have animal handling. Um, mm -hmm. But one of my issues is that GARP... It is wisdom based, so I'm just not very good at training animals, and that can be a funny character trait and whatnot. Um, and I can totally live with that. But I was also wondering: is there a way to like improve a skill? Like, is there a way yes. to get over your innate bad wisdom? Yes. Um, the more non-weapon proficiency slots that you spend on a particular thing, uh, the better it gets. Each additional slot gives it a plus one. Typically, we award non-weapon proficiency slots at certain levels, uh, but if you're doing downtime, there's no reason you can't learn non-weapon proficiencies during downtime. I will look into the rules to see what I can find in between the session and next about like how long it might take to do those things. Yep. But I think someone like to become a master blacksmith would require 
you know, years of practice and tutelage. And if you're trying to teach yourself something, I think the rate of advancement is going to be a little bit slower. Um, but we can do these things. I, I'll yep. just look at the specifics of what that progression looks like. Um, okay, then I would probably want to either learn animal training or just get better with animal handling. I'm thinking I would want to just get better at animal handling rather okay. than train my horse to do something. I don't really need that. Okay. Um... We can do that. I will. I'll take a look in between sessions about cool. how long it'll take, and we'll take a break that will suit your needs. Sounds good. As long as it's not. Um, yeah, I'm am I able to buy a horse? Yeah, that's what I was trying to find. Here is the living costs, and see if they had. Oh, I got that. So it's gonna be costs horse for, for a riding. I assume the upkeep is nine hundred copper. Where is that? Uh, that's on your economic sheet. Oh. You have horse, da draft, riding, war, heavy, and war light. <clears throat> Monthly upkeep. Okay, and so you were talking about a, a riding horse that's going to be nine gold yeah. a month. Am I able gonna? Am I going to be able to, like, use this in fighting? This riding horse, or should I get a hor war horse light? No, you're, if you want to use it in combat, you want a war horse. Okay, then I will. Get... Uh, and the difference between a riding horse and a war horse is it's pretty much just the training. They're the same like size and weight and breeding. It's just one is trained for combat, which takes a long time to like bomb proof them and, and get them accustomed to the sights and sounds and pains. Then I'll get the um, uh, the light war. The light horse. war horse is 150 gold. Yeah, well, it's life. Gotta spend money to 100... make money, Neil. Got to spend money to make money, and I got a uh, hundred and thirteen. But I'm pretty sure I can get a loan from someone. Yeah. Arrakis, do you mind if I borrow that extra fifty gold that I gave you? <laughs> Wait, what? Are, you've got seventy-five of my gold. You can use fifty of that. Wait, you gave me seventy-five of your gold as well? Wait, oh, hang on. It was one hundred twenty-five gold each. You yeah. gave me fifty. Yeah. So you have. Do you I mean, not have 75 of my gold still on you? No, 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 no. Sorry. When I told you that originally, I was giving you an extra 50. I wasn't taking your whole cut. You're going to get the 175. Oh, you're going to get 175. Sense? Yeah, you got your regular 125. I'm not touching that. Oh. But then I gave you an extra 50 to hold on to. And now I'm going to take that 50 back. So you have your regular 125. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, fine. Okay. Um, then I'm at 163 gold. I'll talk to the shopkeeper. Hey, mm -hmm. this is a really nice horse. I'd love to have them. What's their name? Uh, you can name your horse. I'll let you name it whatever you want. You know what I'm going to name it? I'm going to name it off of the names <gasps> that our giant tier patrons can suggest. So I'm going to the NPC suggestion channel, and I'm going to name my horse uh, Melvin. Nice. nice. No, Sh Schnickel Fritz. That's, I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to name my new light war horse Schnickelfritz and I will pay him 150 gold cool. uh, okay. how much health has Schnickelfritz got I should roll it Shouldn't it's 2d8 I? I think isn't it or is it 3d8 no it's 3d8 plus 3 for a horse does it get anything else for being a war horse Neil mm, might do uh, the war horse stats are in the, the monstrous manual I'm just taking a look at the horse buying and horse trait rules I'll, over I'll here. Look, look. Oh, I want to roll if I can. Let me look. look. Horses. Mm, what, you don't have a you don't have the book, Nick? No. We're looking at uh, a light war horse, right? Yeah. Looking at two hit die there for a light war horse. Mm -hmm. So two d eight. I'm gonna wait on Neil because you might. Just not some other great. Are you sure shit? you don't want to get a medium war horse? You mean a heavy for an extra 150 gold? Oh, uh, that's a lot more. Yeah, no. and heavy war horses need a lot of upkeep. Heavy war horses are plus three to hit. Two attacks doing D8 each. That's fucking oh, crazy. Shit. We might we might want to get a heavy oh, one then. Fuck. That's so yeah, three than attacks. Growl. <laughs> yeah. What the hell? It's, it's a heavy attacks? war horse. They're terrifying monsters. 
Mm. Um, but they Nick, need a lot of me 150 upkeep. gold. It's quite slow as well, actually. It's only movement speed 50 instead of 24, which is the one you're going. Yeah, it's fine. Right, you roll the 2d8. That's it. I was waiting on Neil. He was looking oh, yeah, at some ahead, more go ahead, roll your 2d8. Stuff. Do it. Oh, fuck it up. Yep. Okay, can I... Is there some bonuses here? Can I look at the fucking three horses in front of me and do, like, a judging of which horse I think is the shit one? Uh, you need a ranger has an ability that allows them to determine these things, but not rangers. Can I rangers. hire a guy to come help me find a horse? This seems pretty important. You're gonna roll the you're gonna roll the two d eight, just like you rolled for your hit points. It's, it's just gonna. It's just see. I look at this horse and I'm just like, no, that's a sickly horse. There's no way I want that. It's one. not a sickly horse. You know, you can be at one HP, um, and fighting <laughs> great. A... Yeah, that's a fucked up horse. No, that horse is fucked. That's why I really wanted to go hire the ranger, and then you bullied me into rolling. Can I pay a ranger five gold to help me come pick out a horse? He's got three months. He can look around for a good horse. Yeah, and I want to hire a but guy. But here's the thing. That's is the if guys... you can hire a guy, then all yeah. of the good horses are already taken. Because everyone else has hired a guy, and this these are the younger, only horses that are this left. This is a younger horse. Not everybody's hired a guy. There's new horses every fucking year. I, I just... Neil's got a point. If there's a way to determine good horse from bad horse and get the horses that have the higher HP... Wouldn't everybody do that all the time? And wouldn't there be absolutely no low HP war? I mean, only low HP war horses left to buy. Wait, yeah, that's a good point though. So the genetic makeup of horses would now have higher HP. So we should roll eight plus D8 rather that than That takes D8. way too long here. But what, it, you know, and also five HP, your horse could be great at five HP. You can be an excellent fighter. How much HP did uh, Malachi have by the end of his, of his reign? 12 or something. <laughs> When does a but, horse take damage? Like a, I don't think, I've never seen a horse take damage. I think you'll be fine. You'll be fine. <laughs> but also, this is the game. This but, is how the game plays. You rolled an HP for your fine. horse and it was then, bad, and that's just. That's fine. That's, that's just the way it is. We have to roll HP for the dogs. That's, that's for a discount. That's for a discount. You're thinking about this the wrong way. No, no, no. You're thinking about this the wrong way. You just got a horse that you could pawn off on someone else for 150 gold. Uh, I look at this horse. I see it's the last one in the shop. Can I? Can you give me like a ten gold discount? This one's a bit of a lame duck, but I'll take them. I'll take <laughs> them off your hands. Not. All sales are final. No yeah, way. Fuck them. There's a risk. There's an entire couple of paragraphs about the risks of horse buying in the DMG because, of course, there is. Is there something I want to roll to see if it got like the extra fast horse or like the extra um, slutty horse? You know, I, there are horse qualities, but there's not a way of determining. There's just. We'll, we'll say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Roll me a d10. The middle is average. The mm. low end is bad. The high end is good. Six. That's average. Okay. Right. So average no choice. movement or carrying capacity modifiers. That's it for Schnickelfritz? Yeah. All the good horses cost extra, though. They have a uh, times two and times four cost. How much for some horse armor? Oh, shit. That stuff's expensive. Yeah, I'm wor I'm worried about this horse's fucking well-being at this point. Let's hope it's not tailored uh, to the fucking horse, because I'm not sure this one's yeah, going to last. Jesus Christ. It, it, you know, uh, there should be, like, a... You get to, um... You take yeah, a horse a fucking for a deal. test drive for, like, 10 gold or whatever, right? And you get to <laughs> roll... Absolutely not. Wait, wait, no. That's how you just steal horses. Hear me out, hear me out. But you only get to roll one of the health dice. You can figure out, like, oh, maybe this horse is kind of okay. <laughs> I swear that, that would be good. That's a good idea. Oh, God. <clears throat> Oh. Um, just the okay, barding, <clears throat> the barding on your horse for chain barding is five hundred gold. Excuse me, Jesus it's Christ. super expensive. Five hundred yeah, well, gold. Do you That's know how still... much chain mail you have to make to cover a horse? Somehow, wait, wait. this is still only half of the Feedmaster three thousand. By the way, yeah, yeah. I know. True. <laughs> you get like two whole pages of a spell book for that. That's crazy. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you guys, guys, I got a new horse, but I'm not thrilled with it. And if we can ever swap this horse out for another one, I'm sorry, Schnickle I think but you're I think going. while I wait to go outside, as, as August comes with his new horse, my horse yeah, it looks a little fucked up. It's like, a bit, it's like limping a bit, like one of its ears has like been chewed or something. It's like a bit scraggly. It's a great horse, guys. And all of us are just like, Renatus. Ren As a fellow low HP roller, Renatus walks up to this horse and he's like, oh, that was a good horse. You must have paid a good price for that one horse. <laughs> uh, yeah, 150 gold, Renatus. The guy wouldn't even barter. Renatus will let out a low whistle.
I say, a good warhorse, get a bit of armor on that thing, get you a lance. I think you could do some damage. Well, I show you my glaive. This is going to be my lance. This will work. Uh, I will look at the glaive and be like, it'll work, but a lance, let me tell you. Oh, you Thing never got that... to do the riding training, did you? <laughs> well, I have horseback riding, but I'm not, you know, proficient with lances. Uh, no. You only taught me the glaive. And the no. bow, I guess. Yeah. Well. It's fine. I patch knuckle tell you what, on the ass. We'll it's going to be a, a good horse. We'll find a tournament and we'll watch a, a knight in battle and you'll you'll want to you'll want to land. We'll see. A shit All right. Horse. All right. I can't believe the you. Like is great. every kid wanted to be like the knights in the tournaments. No, I never gave a fuck about the lance people because their lances break. Fair. The want goal to be... is to you want the lance to break because otherwise mm. it'll fucking take your arm off when you arm run off, down yeah, a peasant yeah. with it. It's like a crumple zone <laughs> on a car. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. <clears throat> we had one guy actually. I remember this actually. <laughs> I was about twenty years old, and uh, your dad and I'll get a little twinkle in my eye when we talk about your dad. And I was like, your dad was facing was, was look at the go up against this guy, and uh, he had fixed himself a lance. Uh, that had a, an iron core in the center, and he bribed the judge not to not to. So oh, he's basically going to try and kill your dad. But uh, Jesus. turns out your dad took the hit on the shield, and the lance basically backfired uh, and took the dude's right torso off. Oh my god! Holy shit! How many yeah, torsos yeah, did this guy have? It was amazing. Uh, he it was amazing. Your dad, we called him Iron Ironside. There, he really nice. fucked that guy up when he took that hit. Pretty cool. You got your dad sounds like a cool guy, August. Oh, my dad! My dad was great. Man, I bet he had a real, you, he had a real fucking horse as well. Yeah, oh. he did. Oh man, oh you should have seen his horse. <laughs> we had Shadow Fox. Horse. Shadow Fox. He was jet black like midnight, and ooh, I remember I, Shadow Fox. Shadow Fox. Oh, Shadow Fox. Nice. Rockets. I I think I think you need to visit either. one of the lady ladies of the night. Um, I think you've. Been too long for you. Yeah, maybe. I I don't know. You, you see what Autumn awesome was wearing? She's got me acting up. <laughs> you hear my horse, like, wheezing. I think... <laughs> August, you, you, you need to be careful. You're getting you ideas what, above Moon, your fine. station. Roll again. Roll it again. Okay? <laughs> I hope you got... I fall. I, I go back it. inside. I, I, get so much get I, get, I get some balls on me. I go back inside. Listen, I'm not taking this horse. I want that one. And I pull... Like, fine, take yes. the other horse. Okay. <laughs> Let's right. go. That, by the way, Take that him. is one one max roll spear hit from dying. Yeah. That horse. I yeah. say, welcome, Schnickel Fritz the second. <laughs> <laughs> you just gonna call go this on. one Schnickel Fritz as well? Shameless. Yeah, sh this is Schnickel Fritz too. What's the original Schnickel Fritz gonna think about that? I kind of like the original. I don't Schnickel think that Fritz. original one. I like the live first one as well. He looks smart. Yeah, I yeah. wanted to talk to him, but... Yeah, she won't get the chance now. Well, Somebody's a horse racist. I bet you, you know, right, I bet that horse had really good info. <laughs> right, but yeah. Probably some like really unique no. perspectives on the nuances of human and horse relationships as well. Absolutely, yeah. It's like old that horse knew shit. old It steed. knew how the... How yeah. the... <laughs> yeah. Actually, unironically, if you if we could get a noble's old steed, that would be genius. like yeah. super good intel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not like this meathead horse here. He's probably never spoken yeah. a word in his life. Okay, you want, do you guys want the, the old gym. horse back? You want the old one? <laughs> I like Stickle Fritz the first, I'm just saying. <laughs> well, go fuck yourself. I like this one. And I get on him. I liked yeah. the first one. The first one had style. This one didn't. <laughs> this one doesn't wheeze when it runs. And I just... Yeah, I, Around. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. <laughs> Growl. To scare the, as uh, as funny. August sits on the horse. To scare the horse, Growl's gonna turn into a bear. It's a trained war horse, son. I don't think he's this, the, this is a trained horse war react? horse. It's not bullets. Um Yes, if you turn into a bear, the war horse's impulse is to immediately attack you with its uh oh, shit. <laughs> um, just opens up with a bop. 
Let's see. Man, you want to roll me uh, the two attack rolls from your horse? Yeah. yeah. Do you give, plus is one. there like a new plus horse one. attack on me? He's surprised uh, as well. I haven't given you the buttons yet, but I'm going to just tell you what to roll here. Horse attack. I'll just put it on my regular character sheet. Okay. Horse. This is a light war horse. That's a d20 plus one for d4 damage each. Okay. Uh, and how many attacks does it get? Two attacks. So it has one d4 of damage each um, to damage mm -hmm. and to hit. Plus one, you said? No, plus no one plus to damage. Hit. 1d4 damage. This is bludgeoning. And the speed? Yep. Uh, 6. 6. Alright, here you go. Boom! 14 and 16. Uh, 11 and 13, oh, because it's including your... Including I'll, my, we'll set hit. it up, but those I'll are both... Else. Yeah. The 13's a hit on, on Growl. One uh, for d4 damage. 1. Oh, I, I, take it to the I use my horseback riding proficiency to reel him in. Yep, the horse responds perfectly. Good. Nice work. Well, except yeah, it's fate. still a little, you know, still a little startled, but you can keep a control of it, especially since Grau's not attacking any further. Come Grau's on, number gonna, two. Grau's going to turn back into orc form. Okay, yes, yeah, I just wanted to test. It's a, it's a good horse. It's a good, good purchase, August. That other one, I'm telling you, it was, I could hear it wheezing. I was so <laughs> scared for it. <laughs> All right. All right, everybody. All right. That's going to be it for today's session. When we come back next week, I think we're going to have some non-weapon proficiencies, maybe some stories to get involved in. But before we go, uh, we're just going to do a little round-the-clock checking in on our players and our characters. Uh, and we're going to start with... Growl, this has been your session. So let's start with you. Are you disappointed about your visit with Autumn? Yeah, for sure. I think Gra's learning a lot about the gods right now, and I think he's a little bit mostly disappointed in Nadinus. I think he's going to try to mm. talk to her again at some point to figure out what the mm -hmm. fuck happened. Um, he is also, after having that nightmare, very disturbed about all the things that are happening around him, the things that Autumn tells him. Mm -hmm. um, he's a little bit intrigued by the conversation he had with Leaf. But it, it went better than he expected. He didn't tell him that she fucking tortures him. That's good. Mm hmm Um. And I think Growl really liked helping out the mule. That felt really good for him. He felt like he saw a creature that was treated a lot like him in the sense that the humans were like, Oh, this thing's fucking special. We better fucking metal in their shit, you know, instead of leaving it alone. And he got to help it out, and that felt really good. Um, and maybe he's gonna, even going to do some thinking on the other creatures he saw back in that stable. Who knows? Mm. Um, but he also feels demotivated, because it feels like whenever he tries to find out what the fuck he is and where the fuck he's from, mm. it's, just not, it's just always a dead end. Nobody knows. And... Mm. He's also grown grown closer to the party. I think seeing how much they put into that distraction at the farm and how much mm -hmm. they helped him genuinely just achieve something that they had no interest in. It was just for him. Um, he's never had that before, and that felt really good. All right. Do you think... No, let me rephrase. Why do you think Autumn wants the mule? In character? Yeah. I think Grau just believes what Autumn said is that she wants to look at the mule and kind of find out what's going on and maybe draw some conclusions from that that she can relate to Grau mm -hmm. to help him find out what the fuck is happening. You said in character, so that implies that maybe your out of character opinion is different? Yeah, I... F out of character, I'm pretty sus of Autumn. Like, I think, I don't know. It's uh, this. It it seems like she's mostly interested in her own goals and is maybe using Growl to get to them and using Growl's vulnerability. Um, mm -hmm. but she's doing it in a smart enough way that Growl wouldn't really pick up on that. Yeah, that would make sense, right? In a, a really powerful wizard living in a swamp, going after their own goals, and if they happen yeah. to collide with yours. Yeah. That, that tracks. That makes sense. Okay. For sure. Um, <clears throat> next player is going to be Mr. Mooten. 
Yes, sir. You've been out of jail for a long time. That's right. You've gotten relaxed again. Mm. You've learned a lot. You've come a long way. Um, but in this session, we did see just just a hint of the old garp, that, that old confidence and swagger coming back, that like, I'm gonna defend this wizard with a, a glaive and I will attack peasants if I have to. A little bit of like flipping off people on the walls. Just a hint of that old personality emerging, not in a destructive way, in a very reasonable way. Um, was this a, how would you reconcile his, his growth and these, the resurgence of these traits? I think he's had a lot of time away from the like jail and with the party now and he feels more confident in himself to act in a certain way that isn't mm-hmm. going to get everybody killed like in the past he might have when the peasants like pulled their pitchforks up he might have went after them and like pushed them back but instead this time he like held his ground and he only tried to attack when someone actually came to fuck with them and hurt them mm-hmm. um when he saw the guards up on the wall, he just merely flipped them off. He didn't scream at them or anything. You know, when they right, got right. upset, he didn't go after them. So I think he's like, he's learning to let himself still be August and Garp, but he's mm-hmm. choosing not to be overzealous with it and mm-hmm. be self destructive in it. It's like a, a merging of who you are and yeah. the new things that you've learned, and we're trying to fit them together so you're not just a, a drone. Exactly. All right. Love it. He's got a new horse. He's next. happy. Oh, yeah. I was also going to ask about your horse. Uh, the next question is this war horse. That's going to be great, right? It's going to be sweet. I have had the horse weapon riding proficiency for since the start of the campaign, uh, and I am so excited to be on horseback and be able to defend my friends in a new and exciting way also it'll be really nice if people are running away to be able to jump on the horse and like chase them down i feel like Mm -hmm. we've had that happen Mm -hmm. two or three times where people just outrun us Mm -hmm. yeah what if the party needs to leave the horse somewhere for a little bit what are you going to do if like you're going through the woods and then you need to sneak up on something so you like tie the horse to a tree how comfortable are you going to be abandoning this 150 gold upfront investment, not even considering, uh, you know, monthly costs and barding and, and saddles and all that jazz. How comfortable is... are you going to be leaving a huge amount of money completely unattended and in a vulnerable position? This is why I need a squire. I don't need someone mm. who can actually come and help us in combat or anything like that. But I do need someone who can help me take off my gate armor that I'm going to get soon. I need someone to tend to my horse. I need someone to tend to our gear. So I think that one thing that we're going to start doing maybe next episode, um, maybe it happened during this three-month period, not sure yet, um, is get like a dedicated follower or two to join us Mm -hmm. and start creating our little own camp of followers. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And this will lead right into Jamie, because Jamie, you had talked about camp followers recently. Um, what are your intentions about followers? Um, so it's fairly basic stuff, like maybe it would be good to have a wagon and a couple of mules to pull a wagon or something, or a couple of horses to pull a wagon um, or a caravan. So when it's like raining and we're traveling, we, we don't have to... We don't have to walk in the rain. And rather than mm, pitching mm-hmm. tents in the middle of the woods, maybe we can off-road the wagon or something. Now, the only thing is, that kind of thing does mean we have to stick to roads more. So mm-hmm. maybe not necessarily wagon territory, but definitely some sort of mobile caravan-esque thing, right? Maybe get at least one guy who um, looks after the animals. Get one guy, maybe one or two guys who protect the squire and the guy who looks after mm-hmm. the animals but they don't go on adventure they look after the camp they light the campfires they gather firewood and right. they do some of the low level tasks right and the idea here in my mind at least is renatus august the party we're kind of moving up both in levels but we also need to start moving up in like the socioeconomic status right because heroes like if you're a level 20 hero and you're like you know, fucking rubbing sticks together. You know, it doesn't make any sense, right? So now we need we need to start having like a higher people below us who look up to us, who we nurture and respect, and we develop relationships with, and 
delegate so, less important tasks to, right? Um, and that I think okay. is part of like is character progression, and then is like party progression. And in my mind, that's kind of how that mm -hmm. all fits together. The big thing about this is it's going to take money. Right now, you're leading a poor lifestyle of ten gold a month. If you're going to be hiring people to come around with you, you're going to be needing a better lifestyle, right? Um, you're going to you're going to need money to do all of this stuff, to hire these people, to pay for their costs and travels and blah blah blah, and time off if they need it, et cetera, et cetera. Like to buy a wagon and keep it in maintenance, to buy the the mules and keep them in maintenance. That's expensive. So Absolutely. what are you going to do about... But here's the thing. We're, we're not, we're not high-ranking nobles. We're like a ragtag gang right now. So I actually think it would be pretty fun to get like just some adventurous teenagers, like 16 to 18, like young boys who want to go out into the world and adventure. It's like, dude, you want to come look after our ponies while we travel the world? Some people be like, hell yeah, I'll do that for like a gold a month or whatever. And um, that creates interesting opportunities for you because maybe the guy we hired lied about his skills. <laughs> maybe he's like, yeah, I'll totally look after your horses. Fucking like three wisdom, no animal handling, no nothing. And then, but that becomes like a really fun story. Progression. Like, and then like, you know, a year down the line when we're we have proper people we're like remember that time we hired fucking gustav and he let all the donkeys out in the fucking storm it's like it becomes a a fun thing to look back on excellent so yeah i'm going to link you and everybody else in our little production chat uh a specific tab on my economic sheet which shows professions and the expected monthly wages for them so that you can look at them uh, daily wage is if you're going to hire them day by day, weekly if you're going to hire by week, month if you're going to hire for the month, year if you're going to pay them up front for the whole year, etc. Um, so you can go ahead and look through this and sort of judge what you want. If you want someone to care for your horses and mules, that's a groom. Um, you can Google any of the names that you're not certain about. Groom does not mean like a dude that's about to get married. Is there like a way that if we can If you want to like... groom yourself, go to manscaped.com slash Pokemon challenges whoa, whoa, whoa. for 20%. <laughs> oh, no, okay, that's fine. <laughs> I'm gonna say don't pay them don't don't say the name if they don't pay you but you do get paid is there paid. a way that we can like um i don't know go to like a shitty noble family and say like hey i'm you know from here and i know that we might not be hot shit right now but i'm gonna be can i take your son and have him be my whatever <sighs> you no one would ever squire with you ever because you're just some dude you can get an assistant, but it's not going to be a noble kid. It's not going to have like all the things that all the wonderful trappings. But you no. can hire someone you know, is going to squire for me, and it's going to be a little peasant boy who's always wanted to be a fucking knight, and this is his chance. Right? Yep, this is his fucking chance, and that's what I'm going to okay. do. Okay, he is a squire, and that's going to be his calling, and that will be beautiful. But also be well aware that if you run into other nobles and you point to like peasant boy number seven as your squire, there might be some chuckles. Yeah, they'll chuckle when I fight their master and fucking kill him in combat. Based. Yes, exactly. That's what it we're gonna is. Gonna do, we're going to play a knight's tale and it's going to be great. Exactly. Uh, last but not least, we have Arrakis. You just had a whole bunch of conversations with Autumn. Yeah. And I think... Last time you and I talked about Autumn, you were in Jamie, not Jamie, um, Grau's camp, uh, Peachow's camp of not really trusting her or thinking that there's more to meet the eye, which is pretty par for the course for powerful wizards. Yeah. Now you've had a much more frank and direct conversation. How has that changed your opinion of her or has it reinforced your opinion of her? I don't know, because I feel like she is being genuine with me. I think she's being honest about her intention. And I don't think the fact that she wants to keep parts of the tower secret from me is suspicious. I feel like that's mm. what I would do. I think she's lying about how she met Grau. And I think I've yet to hear a good explanation as to why the Fireflies said what they said about her. Just doesn't track mm. with what mm. she is presenting as herself and i've tried to eke some sort of response around those maybe there's a reasonable explanation i don't want to just accuse her of being a genocidal maniac obviously <clears throat> so i'm still a little bit suspicious but i don't think she's a threat to the party at all do you 
by that, do you mean that you think the Fireflies were telling the truth and that she it did genocide the elves? Or do you think that the Fireflies are mistaken or lied to you and she's actually a safe person? I don't think they've got any reason to lie. I think like what mm -hmm. Jamie said, like maybe there could be more to the story. Like maybe she burned down the town, but there was a reason for it, like a better reason that they don't mm. have, or they're spinning it in a way, you know, maybe they don't have the full picture, or they're spinning it in a specific way. But, um, yeah, I do... But you believe the core of the story. Like, that's probably true, that she probably did No, I don't massacre. know, no, I don't know if I... No, I don't know if I believe it, oh. but I'm not dismissing it. I think it could be... It could okay. be true. I feel like there's just more to her than she's laying on. Mm -hmm. um, but I, like I said, I don't think she's a threat to the party. I think she doesn't see us as a threat. I think she is genuinely interested in Grau. And I feel like she's being honest with me about the things that we spoke about around Sackmore and the if tower. She, if she's like a, you said what, seventh circle possible spellcaster well, she here? She implied she could cast Meteor Storm, which is a ninth level spell. So <laughs> That's a ninth level spell. That chick is that's crazy. True. Yeah. I don't um, think she's ninth level. But. Yeah. She, I mean, that's a probably easy thing to pretend to be as a yeah. wizard, right? But if you think she's maybe 10th level or 12th level or something... Um, why is she interested in Grau? She obviously is interested in him. She's gone out of her way. She's teleported to protect yep, him. Yep. You know. Um, exactly. I think that there's more to this. So what's the deal? There's more to this animal fascination. I think she made Grau or had a hand in his creation or in at least some way is linked to his creation. I've been saying this the last few times about mm -hmm. these conversations. I still think that. Mm -hmm. I don't do not for a second believe that he just turned up at the tower. The only way that makes sense is if the elves he was with sent him in this direction, as if to say, you're going through some shit, this person can help you. That's the only mm. way that makes sense. But mm -hmm. the way she's mm -hmm. like tracking down these donkeys and she's got this dog, which I wasn't party to in character, but a very fucking smart dog. And you've got a very specific way of playing your dogs. That guy, that dog did not sound like a regular animal dog. He sounded more like a human than a dog. So something going on with a dog, I think. It's smarter than your average dog. There's a mule that's given birth. You know, she's got a bear that's a druid. I, I feel like she's yeah. up to some experiments. Some animal experiments. She said Do you she... want to take a stab at what you think the, the purpose of her experimentation might be? Hmm. No, because I've got no idea what her experiment... Like, I don't even know what the experiments are, never mind what they're for. Um, okay. uh, last question about... Oh, yeah. go ahead. Um, no, uh, that's fine. Go ahead. Last question about Autumn. There was a moment in conversation where she said something like, my people, and pushed back her ears to imply, like, I'm an elf, these are my people. And you specifically called out, wait, isn't she a half-elf, and rolled, and mm. are pretty certain she's a half-elf. Was do you did you get the impression she was trying to fake that she was an elf, or did you get the impression that she was just saying that as a half elf she's also part of you know, the yeah. elves are also well, her people? What, someone what someone, on? someone who's half elf could claim to, could easily speak like that and be talking about the elven community. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that's necessarily suspicious. But then on the other hand, given that we already have doubts around uh, potentially genociding elves, then maybe she does have reason to lie about about that maybe if i think she's a full elf i'm less likely to suspect that what the fireflies are saying about her is true and even though she doesn't know i've spoken to the fireflies if it is true that she did that she might expect that i might hear rumors that she had done these things so she might be trying to like stay that off at the source mm -hmm. it's all conjecture i've got no idea really okay we, we just have a lot of suspicion about her a lot of things are are not quite smelling right, but we don't know what the motivation is on any of them. It's not added up, Neil. Yeah. Mmm. Well, the kids, the math oh, ain't math, and that's what the kids say these days, isn't it? That's what they say. Yeah. Is that what the kids say these days? The math ain't math, and yeah. Ah, oh, good saying then. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's it. Wait, we'll sorry. We'll be back next week. Or as we say in England, the maths ain't mathsing. Oh. <laughs> oh, get out. At least Take there's no away. guns in our shoes. Skills, sorry. I want gun shoes. <laughs>
Uh, we'll be back next week, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, see you then. Bye. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to head to the subreddit r slash koibu if you want to give your thoughts on the episode. Patreon.com slash save or die if you want to support and get additional content. Also, make sure to keep an eye out on Mr. Moon's Twitter because he will be posting whole there very soon. Very yes, soon. Let me know. Yes. I'm ready. Yep. That's right.